Morgantown and yes it still remains cool while the flurries may be gone game time temperature just a couple above the freezing mark wind chill at 18 degrees and the winds coming from the northwest at 7 to 12 miles per hour and it should stay dry for the remainder of the afternoon partly cloudy skies the forecast for today 51 year old Doug Graber the head coach of the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, 27, up 34 down with one tie. He'll go up against a longtime friend this afternoon in West Virginia's Don Nealon, who will turn 60 on New Year's Day. The winningest coach in West Virginia history, 113, 67, and four. And uh, Don Nealon says being shut out on back-to-back -back weekends is the first time that's happened, and it was over 30 years of coaching today's game the 23rd meeting between Rutgers and West Virginia the Mountaineers have had the advantage in fact Rutgers has never won a game here in Morgantown they have been winless in 10 tries however last year Rutgers knocked off the Mountaineers by a final score of 17 to 12 and that was in the new dedication game at the newly revamped Rutgers Stadium. Joe Kukowski will kick the ball off for the Scarlet Knights. Rutgers won the opening coin toss. They've deferred their option to receive to the second half, and so West Virginia will start this game off on offense. Kukowski's kick will be shallow and fielded from the 10-yard line across the 20 to the 30-yard line. West Virginia will have a good starting point, a 27-yard return. Peter Clark, a true freshman for the Scarlet Knights, makes the tackle. Chad Johnston, the quarterback for West Virginia, in the backfield today. Jimmy Gary and Can Troy Barber. David Saunders, a talented freshman receiver. On the offensive line, Joe DeLong, the left tackle. That is a unit that has been hit very hard by injuries. Chad Johnston, the Mountaineer quarterback, ready to go to work. It's been a couple of frustrating weeks for Johnston. The Mountaineers have not been able to find the end zone. Six touchdown passes this season, nine interceptions. On the game's opening play, it's the senior Jimmy Gary across the 35-yard line and a good pickup ahead to the 39 for the senior from Okeechobee, Florida, an eight-yard pickup. Defensively for the Scarlet Knights, Rashad Swinger, the best of the down linemen. Rusty Swartz making the start this afternoon in place of Charles Woolrich, who was injured last week. Brian Sheridan, the middle linebacker, leads the Scarlet Knights in tackles. He's averaging over 10 per game. And the secondary, it is very young. Derek Ward, the most experienced, a junior from Sweetsboro, New Jersey. On second down and short, Matt McCulty comes in motion for West Virginia. Again, it's Jimmy Gary with the corner. And a first down for the Mountaineers as he reaches the 45-yard line, a pickup of five on the play. Dick McPherson, your keys to this afternoon's game. Well, I think that uh, they've got to stop the uh, Rutgers Vaughn offensive tools, and we'll see that a little bit later when Rutgers gets the football. They've got to score points because they've been shut out two weeks in a row. They've changed the punters today. I think they've improved from that standpoint. And special teams and field position will win the game. They got off to a good start with an excellent kickoff return and already got a first down, Tony. Yeah, last week uh, when West Virginia played Virginia Tech here, the Mountaineers uh, did not see this close to the 50 for almost the entire opening half. On first down, Johnson looks to pass for the first time this afternoon. And over the middle, he finds Rashad Vanterpool good to the midfield mark. Six yards on the pickup. As for the Scarlet Knights, their keys into this game. I think that really what you got to do again is get the matchup situation. Uh, the Bretons have got to move the ball against the West Virginia strength, which is that defense. Well, we're going to see that bonnet offense just a little bit later. They've got to eliminate the West Virginia run strength by kicking the safeties down to make it an eight-man front. And uh, West Virginia has got to make sure they take advantage of that situation with the safeties. Here's another play. Let's run that first. This is Johnston. Play actions and has time down the middle. It's the tight end. Love it, Purnell. And Purnell will break West Virginia's scoring drought that had lasted for two weeks. A 49-yard touchdown reception. Yep. Just what we talked about. They got to take advantage of the safeties coming down to play the run. It's a play action pass. And, and the inexperienced safeties uh, very, very tough on uh, to coach freshmen in this uh, Big East League. Now take a look here. We've talked about the youth in this defensive back. The watch number 11, Aaron Brady, the true freshman, he was beaten on the play. Well, you know, again, he's coming over to play the weak side run, trying to stop the run. And that's exactly an excellent call by, you know, the uh, West Virginia offensive quarter, Dan Simbrall. The extra point from Ryan Bauman is good, and West Virginia wastes absolutely no time taking their opening possession 
down the field as Lovett Purnell, a senior from Seaford, Delaware, scores his fourth touchdown of the season. West Virginia early on takes the lead over the Scarlet Knights. Here we go, Whopper Junior Value Meal, Thank Whopper you. for me and a double Whopper. Thanks, man. Double Whopper? I'm scared of you. It's good. It's as big as the American way. Big cars, big houses, big food. At Burger King, get the flame broiled taste of a Whopper value meal for just your size appetite at just your size price, starting at $1.99. And get your burgers worth. And what about moderation? Moderation's cool. Virginia on a 49-yard touchdown pass from Chad Johnston to Lovett Purnell takes the lead. Didn't take it very long to get back on the scoreboard. Eight quarters and two minutes and 24 seconds are in it. You saw the safety to come down and play just a freshman young man playing the football game. Lovett, uh, the just took advantage of it, ran the play, actually put it right in the end zone. What a way to start for West Virginia. A very sour way for Rutgers. Now they've got to come back and run their offense and see if they can move the ball against the vaunted uh, West Virginia defense. That's the key right now. Can they start moving the ball, Tony? Brunel was a problem last season in the meeting against Rutgers. He finished the game with seven catches. His first one goes for a touchdown. On the kickoff from West Virginia's Brad Hackett, fielded from the 20-yard line and across the 35 ahead to the 40 is Chad Bosch. 23 yards on the return. The offensive unit for Rutgers keyed by the standout tight end, Marco Battaglia, who enters today's game with the Big East leading 47 catches. The offensive line, it's a solid group. A senior late group, Robert Barr, the best of that unit at the right tackle position out of Freehold, New Jersey. Tony Bernardo Russ is not playing for the defense. He had a concussion. The doctors kept him out, and they've got the reserve right in there right now. Emerson is coming in, number 58, to play his position. A real good football player. Not too much of a loss. Fumble on the opening snap. Kenneth Curtis of West Virginia leaps on top of it, and the Mountaineers have taken the possession. Knute Curtis leaps on top of the intended handoff for Bruce Presley. Miscommunication in the backfield. He never had a hand on the ball. Well, you see very quickly what happened is the back coming over knocked the ball out of the quarterback's head. Just a fluke. And big plays out of big people. Knute's right there. Jumps right on it. Tremendous turnover in a very positive field position for West Virginia. Those are the things that we talked about that Rutgers cannot do. That's what's caused him problems all year. Taking a look at that replay, he had no intention of handing that ball off. That was a fake. And on the opening play for West Virginia, a penalty marker comes down. And so Presley bumps into Lucas's intended handoff in West Virginia. Well, he's getting set to block. He just Dead ball. sets his arms out. Illegal snap. Offense. Five yard penalty. First and 15. Mountaineers will step back five yards, and right there is a microcosm of the season for there West go, Virginia. Bro. They have been just decimated all year long bad with field penalties. Position. Exactly, with bad field position, first and 15, first and 20, and they don't have an offense. That's that's not their style, and uh, they've got to get that cleaned up if they're going to continue to be a successful football team. Uh, just no good offensive team can do that. West Virginia trying to capitalize on a Rutgers turnover. The Mountaineers already on top, seven to nothing. That's Rashawn Vanterpool in motion for West Virginia. And Jimmy Gary takes it around the right side. A nice open field tackle. Coming up the left side cornerback, cornerback Cameron Chadwick, a junior out of Union, New Jersey, upends Gary after a two-yard pickup. Good you know, again, we got to talk about the safety is the problem, but when you go out and against an experienced guy like Cameron Chadwick and you attack the corners, you're going to get good defensive play out of the secondary of Rutgers because they haven't been hurt there and they're playing very well there. But I think you've got to admit that Jimmy Gary's hot today. They're going to feed him the ball because he's in a running mood. Tony Alexander has come in as a receiver for West Virginia on second down and long. Play, play, play. Looking for Rashawn Vanterpool, and he drops it over the 40, 38 yard line. Brian Sheridan, the linebacker on the coverage for Rutgers, and that will bring up third down. Vanterpool, who caught a pass for West Virginia on its opening possession, has had a difficult week. In fact, he was not even in Morgantown yesterday. He was back home on Long Island attending the funeral of his grandfather. Vanterpool's dad passed away a few years back. His grandfather had been overseen and taking care of him, so a very difficult time for Rashawn Vanterpool. Well, he gave a very difficult time for the West Virginia by dropping that football. That puts him in trouble. Third and long, tough for any football team. 
Johnston fires sideline for the freshman David Saunders in West Virginia. Picks up the first down. Good to the 28-yard line, a 16-yard reception. And Chad Johnston of the Mountaineers has completed three of his first four attempts. I just want to emphasize to everybody that even though you see a play-action pass, don't think that Rutgers is being fooled by this. That's all it is is a protection thing. It's a very good protection scheme by West Virginia. And he drove the corner off, and this young freshman, David Saunders, is, uh, is going to be a great player at West Virginia, and this really helps him. And academically, he is a sophomore. He is a redshirt freshman on the football field. Now Robert Walker in the backfield for West Virginia. His first carry finds a seam, and he's good to the 19-yard line, a seven-yard pickup for the senior from Huntington, West Virginia, who enters today's game just 98 yards away from West Virginia's all-time rushing lead. We've got two very good backs in this game. Walker, who's got the opportunity to leave as West Virginia's all-time leader on the ground, and then last week, Terrell Willis of Rutgers, who we've yet to see carry the ball, became Rutgers' all-time leading rusher. This could be an exciting day for Robert Walker because he could actually set this rushing record here today and it's something we'll watch as the game continues. On second down, again into the backfield, Robert Walker picks it up for a first down, good to the 14-yard line, a pickup of five yards on the play. So West Virginia showing some strength there as far as depth goes in the offensive now, back. What you're going to area. see is the offensive line that's been so maligned for the past couple of weeks just blowing Rutgers right out of there makes any back look good and I know that's what West Virginia is looking for and what we talked about that Rutgers cannot let happen. They've got to control the line of scrimmage and not have to use the safeties like they're doing right now to help the run game. First down run by Walker brings the ball to the 15 yard line. And they go on the ground, and Walker looks to turn it. Ahead to the 11-yard line. Good defensive work there by Charles Wiley, the free safety. And once again, Cameron Chadwick in on the tackle for the Scarlet Knights. This looks like a get-well day for the West Virginia offense, just the kind of thing they need to get everybody excited and get things going in the first quarter. They've eliminated the offensive fears, and they're averaging four or five yards of carry running the football, which makes uh, Chad a great quarterback today. Yes, That's sir. what he needs to be a good quarterback with the play-action game, the bootleg game. It's an exciting game once it starts rolling. Six carries, 34 yards on the ground for West Virginia. On second down, the fullback, Cam Troy Barber, gets his first crack at it today, and he'll pick up a yard. Rashawn Giddings, number 57 down there for the Scarlet Knights, to make the tackle. Barber, a big physical fullback for West Virginia, 245 pounder at six feet three inches tall. He comes into the game averaging four yards per carry. His best outing this season was at Boston College when the Mountaineers knocked off the Eagles by a final of 31 to 19. He ran one in for a score and also caught a touchdown pass. With the play actions going the way they're going, he'll be a factor in the game running the football later. But he's always nice to have around. He blocks so well. He sets a complete team play. Robert Walker inside to the eight yard line and a penalty marker is on the play. May get some motion called here against West Virginia. Two men in motion at the same time. And that is the preliminary signal. West Virginia this week uh, started to fool with some new formations and that was one of them with uh, the back split wide. Normally West Virginia runs out of an eye formation and apparently two players moved at the same time. That'll cost him five. It's interesting to see if he'll take that thing or make him kick the field goal. It's interesting. Now the formation you're talking about uh, Tony is the split backs. Illegal shift. Official. Offense. The five yard penalty has been declined. Yeah. Fourth down. They're going to challenge him, make him kick. And that's exactly what's happening right now. And Bowman's coming in. Take a look at that last call. You saw the motion. Now here's the split backs, which is uh, very indicated indicated that they're going to be trying to rush to the outside against that seven-man, eight-man front that uh, Rutgers is putting on. It's been that strategy has been working for him. Now on these kind of days, everything works well. The kick looked like it's almost automatic. This will be a 25-yard attempt from Brian Bowman. And the kick is good. So West Virginia capitalizes on the Rutgers fumble. And the Mountaineers take a 10 to nothing lead with nine minutes and 43 seconds to play here in the opening quarter. We'll be back to Mountaineer Field in Morgantown. The family 
family of the future will have many hundreds of television channels. Gee, mister, won't that be confusing? Not with this, a video guide. It'll let them see what's on seven days into the future, or what's on right now. It'll give them instant news and sports scores. And with just one touch, they'll even be able to tape record their favorite television shows. Don't forget the tape. So what do you think they'd call this video guide? Video guide. It's about time. As the official airline of the 1996 Olympic Games, Dell... You know, the interesting thing, through adversity, some good things happen. Brian West is now the holder, and you can bet that old Bowman's going to say, I like this guy. He gets a good kick, he's patting him on the fanny. Uh, anything like that will affect the punter, it will affect the kicker. Any little thing like that helps, and I'm sure that uh, old Wookie Perez might be still sitting in the hospital. He's going to lose his holding job, I think. Wookie Perez, uh, back up for the Mountaineers, is in the hospital right now after undergoing an emergency appendectomy. Brian West, the holder there for West Virginia. And the pickoff from Brad Hackett, fielded by Terrell Willis. And Willis is met short of the 25-yard line and driven back after a 16-yard return. Terrell Willis, who was named the Big East Special Teams Player of the Week last week after a big game against Pitt. Knut Curtis, who had that fumble recovery on Rutgers' opening possession, the leader along the defensive line. On the linebacking spots, J.T. Thomas is the leader. Now, Bernard Russ was scheduled to start. He's out of the game with a concussion. In the defensive backfield, watch out for Aaron Beasley. He has four interceptions this season for West Virginia, led the nation in pickoffs a year ago. Off will go to Bruce Presley in West Virginia defensively is there and waiting. Tony, as we mentioned earlier, the West Virginia defense is only the second play they've been on the, on the field and almost a half a quarter is gone. This is what they've got to find out. Can the West Virginia defense, which is a good one, stop that great Rutgers offense? If they do that, it's going to be a long afternoon for the Scarlet Knights of uh, wherever that place is in New Jersey. <laughs> Begins with a P, I think. Second down and 11. And this time, Rutgers out of an I formation. Ezra Johnson is the fullback. Presley again will get the call right up the middle. And he'll cross it ahead to the 28-yard line. Met there by Jamie Swinney. A pickup of five yards on the parlay. Right now, let's take a look at our out-of-town scores brought to you by John Hancock, official worldwide sponsor of the 1996 Olympic Games. Coming up later on, Boston College meets up with Temple. The big showdown in the Big East is Syracuse taking on the Hokies of Virginia Tech this afternoon. Now the go-to guy in this situation is the Marco Battaglia. See if they're going to be able to get to him. They stayed away from him. He's double teamed. Instead, they go to the wideout. Stephen Harper and the sophomore from Atlantic City should have held on to that football. Oh, they my goodness. It. See, this is the kind of thing that's got to drive a quarterback neck, a coach nut, just right in his football hands. Just make the catch. There's no need to jump around. That's what happens to receiver. You lose your feet. You lose your solid foundation. Just make the catch and keep the ball going. Tough break for Rutgers. Jared Slovin is the punter for the Scarlet Knights to Rashawn Vanterpool, who signals for the fair catch at the 31-yard line. Eight minutes and 13 seconds to play here in the opening quarter. That was a 42-yard punt from Slovin. West Virginia on top of the Scarlet Knights, 10 to nothing. You know, Ted Williams always made the statement that uh, hitting a baseball is the most athletic and hardest thing to do in sports. I'd like to have him stand back there like Rashad has to and catch some of these punts with people coming down. See how he likes it then. That's a little bit, that's a little tough athletic event too, you know. Especially on a cold day. As you see, there's a penalty marker down, down on the play. Penalty has been declined and West Virginia will start it off once again from the 32-yard line. We've got a timeout here in Morgantown. The Mountaineers getting ready for their third offensive possession, leading it by 10. One inside. West Virginia head coach Don Nealon about his game plan and uh, obviously Nealon said he wanted to test that defensive unit of Rutgers specifically in the defensive backfield those corners and uh, we've seen that uh, Dick McPherson so far they're trying to use that perimeter on some toss sweep plays. They're, they're in real good sync great field position today you're going to see a good offense uh, by West Virginia in my opinion all afternoon. 
toss it this time to the short side of the field. This is Robert Walker, who is knocked out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Rusty Swartz in on the stop after a two-yard pickup for Robert Walker. I'll tell you one thing, Rutgers is here to play. I could hear the smash right up here in the press box on that hit right down to the sidelines. Robert Walker ran a right pitch right into the sidelines, and he got met through Rudy there. Rudy got a good lick on him. They came to play also. We'll see them stay in the football game. We have to admire that courage and that tenacity. Johnson will step up, and he'll go for a little bit of a hike over the 40-yard line. He's down to the 42, eight yards on the pickup. Don Nealon, we asked him the game plan for his Mountaineers, considering the fact that Rutgers is banged up in the defensive backfield. If we can hold them out, we're going to try to throw the football some. But, uh, you know, Mac, our passing game is predicated on the fact that we need to run the football a little bit so that our play action passing is good. So regardless about their secondary, we're going to see number one. We're going to try to get outside a little bit, see if they can tackle, and then hopefully we can throw the ball a little bit. And so far, 37 yards on eight carries for West Virginia as they stretch out the chains, and they'll be just short of first down. Yeah, Tony, he's been outside with the football, just exactly what he said to us. The other thing he's done, he's thrown the football. Levat Purnell running the thing in the end zone. Uh, they're right on schedule and doing just exactly what they want to do now. Key again we talked about is field position. They can operate so daringly because they aren't in trouble from a field position standpoint if there is a turnover. So I think uh, they're in good shape. What happened on that measure? Did they make it? Just short of it. Just uh, short of it. Just short of a third first shot yardage. One of my favorite football plays. I'd love to see smash football, short yardage. Everybody bunched in. Let's see if we can hit somebody. West Virginia will put their tight end, Love It Brunel, off the left side. And the motion man is Rashawn Vanterpool. Watch 46 lead this evening. No quarterback sneak. Well, there's a good indication that Chad Johnston's sprained knee seems to be coming along just fine. Johnston's still out there with the knee brace, takes it under center, and gives West Virginia a first down. I know exactly why he did it. He should have ran for that. He got the first down. Donnie says, you didn't get it. Go back and get it again. Take a little beating, Chad. He'll learn to go for the first down from now on. Inside of eight minutes to play in our opening quarter, and there is that knee brace that uh, Chad Johnston has been carrying around since West Virginia's game at East Carolina. That's when the injury occurred, and he worked uh, very hard in that game uh, to, to make a rehabilitation effort, and he did it. Fortunately, West Virginia had an off week, and he did not miss a scheduled start. On first down, Robert Walker maneuvers, and he crosses over the 45-yard line. Pick up of two on the play, and Aaron Brady, the true freshman, number 11, was there to make the stop on Robert Walker. You know, even though there appears to be a lot of big holes in the Rutgers defense, that penetration is stopping inside moves very well because Robert Walker has to bounce around to try to get to that hole, and now the linebackers can get over to make the hit. They're, they're settling down here defensively now. Makes to see what kind of a drive West Virginia is able to put together in this thing. Here's an unbalanced line. Unbalanced, and they run it to the strong side. And this is Robert Walker, and he'll be met right at the midfield stripe. A pickup of four yards on the play. Linebacker Brian Sheridan always seems to find a way to be around the football for the Scarlet Knights. Well, you know, they can talk about a nose for the ball, but he sees the pitch, and he just flies right out there, gets in good position on the thing, wraps up everybody, and moves right in inside out. If you notice, it was excellently contained, which sent the play right back to Sheridan. That's good team defense. They, uh, West Virginia went to an unbalanced line, outnumbered him, but the inside pursuit, the contain, is what stopped it from a defensive standpoint. Good defense. Third down conversion attempt for West Virginia. And on the ground, they go to Robert Walker, and he will be stopped short. Forward progress will give Walker decision time, inches to go, fourth down. You know what the fans are going to start screaming for, Tone? Go for it, coach. It'll be interesting to see what Donnie does here. They gave him a generous spot. They really did on his initial penetration. And uh, Tony, you as we eye it like up right here. You don't sound much like a West Virginia guy here with these generous spots. <laughs> <laughs> he was driven back, but the uh, initial spot is going to be close enough that they're going to bring the chains over. I don't think he has it. He's just missed. Yeah. He's got about a uh, foot, foot and a half. Whoa. Up 10 to nothing. 
Don Nealon is going to uh, send the punt team on. And it pleases the crowd. <laughs> They're all cheering for the punter. What is his name, Boo? <laughs> Boo's the punter. They're all cheering for him. John Powers comes on. He uh, took the starting job over this week after uh, Brian West was ineffective. Last week, Reggie Funderburk, number six, is the deep man for the Scarlet Knights. He waits back at his 10-yard line. Powers is an interesting story. He's a walk-on to this West Virginia program. Had not punted since his high school days. He's now a senior and wanted to give it a try. They brought him on during the uh, spring, and he stuck around through the fall. And uh, with West not getting the job done, John Powers becomes West Virginia's punter. From the 19-yard line, West Virginia coverage team does a very good job and stops him short of the 25-yard line. A 27-yard punt, a four-yard return. Rutgers finds itself down 10 to nothing here in the opening quarter. Doug Graber, the head coach of the Scarlet Knights, was asked the significance of today's game for the Rutgers program. It starts here. We, we're obviously extremely uh, disappointed with the start that we've had to our season, and we've struggled in a lot of areas. Uh, I feel like we're starting to turn the corner a little bit, and if we can somehow come down here and, and get this victory, then I think it would really propel us on to greater things. On first down, Ray Lucas rolls that pocket out and fires for Stephen Harper, who is wide open, and down the sideline goes Stephen Harper. The man who dropped a pass on Rutgers' last possession races it in for 77 yards, and Harper scores the touchdown, his fourth of the season. Defensively, West Virginia was just plain beaten as well, they Harper got takes the other roll. He, he, did, he didn't keep his eye on the quarterback and the receiver, and uh, it's just a complete breakdown by a defensive back for West Virginia, and they scored a touchdown. I think everybody's uh, concerned about the, the sprint out, roll out theory of uh, Ray Lucas. And all of a sudden, right back at a ball game fast. A red hot Stephen Harper. He had, uh, has now caught a touchdown pass in each of the last four games. Well, he owed him one after that drop of the third down play, and he certainly paid it back. Nice job, Stephen. Nick Mickemeyer's extra point attempt is no good. He missed it off to the left. So Mickemeyer misses, and the score will hold at 10 to 6. West Virginia on top. Here's another look. Now, what you'll see is a safety rolling over to the top and just not paying attention to the receiver. Thought that they had the quarterback under control and uh, didn't pay attention to his own progress over there and let a guy run right by him. Right now, let's get a score update back at our Big East studios. Here's John Sanders. All right, Tony, thank you very much. The update that we have comes from the Baylor-Miami game, and the Baylor Bears doing much of their work in the early part of the ball game on the ground. From two yards out, it's Gerard Douglas. He'll work his way into the end zone. So Baylor has taken the early lead over the Canes in Miami. It's seven to nothing there. Let's take you from Miami back to Morgantown. Thanks, John. A 77-yard touchdown reception to Stephen Harper has brought Rutgers right back in. 10-6. You know, there's on top. 10-6, Tony, is a is a terrible thing to be. You know, you see the receiver very happy sitting on the bench, but that doesn't bode well when you miss a 99% thing that you should get is the kick. Put it through 10 to 7. Now you're in a ball game. Now you have four points down. It changes the strategy all over the place. That doesn't bode well for Rutgers. Those kind of mistakes are what kill you. Here's the kickoff, Tony. And Kukowski's kickoff will be fielded from the two-yard line. This is Panther Pool, and he will be met and driven back short of the 20-yard line. There's a lot of things that go into a kick. Let's just exactly see what happened to it. It looks good from every every area. Yep. He just brought that foot around. Nobody knows that better than I do as a golf game. <laughs> Should be a much easier swing than that. And uh, he brought that foot right around and caused the whole problem himself. The protection, the snap, the hold were all good. The fourth thing, the kick, is what caused the problem. There was not a good return out of the end zone by Rashawn either, I don't believe. Play action on first down. Johnston will keep and he'll run it out of bounds. He'll be uh, short of the original line of scrimmage. He'll lose a couple of yards on the play. You know, you go back uh, 
And you take a look at West Virginia not going for it on fourth down and inches and punting the ball away. And, and a poor punt. And a poor punt. And a poor punt of 27 yards, which caused the problem. It allowed them to get better field positions so they could try a play like that. Uh, these are the kind of strategy things that uh, I think Donnie did the right thing of punting with a score of 10-0, though. It certainly wasn't a coaching decision. Johnston again looks to throw and serves it out for David Saunders, who is unable to make the catch. The pass comes low. Another score update. Back to our Biggie Studios. Here's John. Well, you've had a couple of long pass plays there, Tony, in the game between the Mountaineers and the Scarlet Knights. Watch this one from West Lafayette, Purdue's Rick Krebsker. Down the middle, wide open is Brian Alford. He's off to the races. 64 yards for the touchdown, a 7-0 lead for Purdue over Wisconsin. Back to Tony and Dick. Mountaineers are familiar with that Purdue team. West Virginia opened up the season against the Boilermakers here in Morgantown and uh, missed a chip shot field goal to win that game in the final seconds, and the Boilermakers held on for the win. Johnston again pressured, and they have got him down at the five-yard line. Rusty Swartz making the start here this afternoon with an 11-yard loss on that play. The junior from Edison, New Jersey, will force West Virginia into punting. Now again, this is a very bad series for Chad Johnson. Uh, he threw a pass that was wide open in Saunders and didn't complete it. He should have ran and put some pressure on him, then stand back there and get sacked on this play. you got to get rid of the ball down here, especially with your punting game, because you can't get yourself in a hole, which is what's being caused here right now. Now we need a punt. And you got one. John Powers forces Thunderbird to drop back to the 45-yard line, and he'll be met and dropped at the 39. Tackle made by West Virginia's Greg Hernandez, and Rutgers will have its best field position of the afternoon, a 40-yard punt from John Powers and a five-yard return for Reggie Thunderbird. No, the punter John Powers did his job on that one, high and deep, right out of the end zone, gave them a little bit of respectability for the first time today. Across the 50 is Rutgers other than the big football play, and they've got good field position. Now West Virginia's got to answer the call from a defensive standpoint. On the toss, they go to Terrell Willis, who's been quiet so far in this opening quarter. And now a late penalty marker is going to come in, and West Virginia is going to get charged with a 15-yarder personal foul after a four-yard pickup from Terrell Willis, number one for West Virginia. The free safety, Van Washington, came in and made the late hit. You watch this now. You'll see the. Uh, you'll see that the officials going to have a lot of help when you when you hit somebody on the sideline with the opposing team. You're going to get a lot of help in terms of fishing. Oh. Oh. On the defense, great hit out of bounds, 15 yards. That's close. The dead ball That's spot. close. First down. That's a close one, but uh, you know you're right there on the sideline. I think, I think that uh, if we can get another look at that, I want to see how far away he is. In. Well, Willis was no question. He was out of bounds, going out of bounds, and also Washington went up high to make that hit towards the face mask. So Rutgers now brings the ball down to the West Virginia 21-yard line. They trail by four, Mountaineers 10, and the Scarlet Knights 6. On the ground, Willis again tries the left side, and Canute Curtis of West Virginia gets a hold of the back of his jersey and knocks him down, a one-yard pickup for Willis. Now, you don't want to be a Canute Curtis fan, but you recovered a fumble and just made a great play by taking Tara Willis and holding them up till the pursuit guts there because there was a hole in that football play. And number 42 is a very alive and active today. Willis will go out of the game now for the Scarlet Knights. Bruce Presley will come in. Bill Powell has also checked in as a receiver for Rutgers. In fact, they're going to put three wides to the bottom of your screen. And Lucas on the roll, looking, firing, and incomplete for Reggie Funderburg. That'll bring up third down. And nine. Funderburg had a phenomenal season a year ago. 55 catches. He finished second in the Big East. He comes into today's game with 32 catches on the year. It's very obvious with the rush, they're going to take Ray Lucas, the quarterback number one, and move to the outside. A tremendous uh, effort by the receiver on that play because it was overthrown too high to the outside. Again, Rutgers will go with three wideouts. On third down and nine. 
Lucas fires in complete. He was looking for his tight end, Marco Battaglia, who never opened up. He comes and he over flag. close. I think Battaglia was trying to officiate and said something naughty to the officials. That's what I think the call is. I'm not sure. Those markers came down very late after the play was over. Downfield offense. There's the preliminary call. An eligible receiver downfield for the Scarlet Knights. That was a third down play. I'm, so sure they're gonna now. It. I'm sure they're going to refuse it. Make him kick the field goal. Ineligible receiver, downfield, offense. The five-yard penalty has been declined. Fourth down. John Smith, our Big East official this afternoon. Rutgers will bring on its kick team. Nick Mickemeyer, his first chance. This afternoon was a missed extra point that he sliced wide to the left. This will be a 37-yard field goal attempt for Mickemeyer. Now, this is a good side for Nick and Tini hooks the football. These are the kind that are easy for him. This hash mark, he should make it because the other hash mark is trouble to him. Missed it again. He was wide to the left on his first attempt. This time, Mickemeyer goes wide to the right. Doug Graber, obviously frustrated. He has just seen his kicker blow four potential points, which would have made it a tie yeah, football that's what you're game. that's you're talking about. Is this a special team game? Does kicking import? 10 to 7, 10 to 10. One man. No. Snap Everything looks awful perfect. good. Yeah, perfect form. I, I don't know where the kick ended up from this viewpoint, but it looked to me like he kicked it off to the right a little bit. He certainly looked good, and all the mechanics looked awful good on that. On first down, Johnston, pressure, incomplete for Rashawn Vanterpool, who obviously winces in frustration. That's the second one that he has dropped here in the opening quarter that he very well should have caught. Well, that shows you again that you miss practice. It hurts you. He's dropped two passes, was very non-aggressive on the kickoff. Uh, they have to make a decision just exactly how they're going to use him with the excellent receivers they have sitting on the bench. Because he's hurt them you know, pretty much three times very early in the football game. West Virginia now looking at second down and ten. And on the ground they go. Jimmy Gary, who's back out there, picks up a couple of yards, met by Rusty Swartz. look at Jimmy Gary who comes into today's game with 914 career yards five touchdowns he scored two of those TDs this season and averaging just a little bit over four yards per carry this afternoon They're going to the three wide receivers West Virginia is and uh, big third down catch is the key to keep this drive going help them feel They're going to run it on the ground with Jimmy Gary, and he will be stopped short of the first down. Brian Sheridan, the linebacker, the first to make the contact. A four-yard pickup, and West Virginia goes quickly. Three plays and out, and John Powers will come on to punt. Now again, if you're West Virginia and the Winnet West Virginia coach team, you're going to be watching John Powers. See what kind of kick he gets off to regain some field position. He gets where uh, Rutgers here right now. There it goes. Oh, here's a beauty. Funderburg back steps from the 25 yard line. Funderburg with a penalty marker down is dropped at the 31 yard line. A 43 yard punt, a very good punt for John Powers. Uh, I think you'll find that uh, number 28, Derek Ward, gave a push in the back on the thing, and uh, that's what caused it. That's what kills Rutgers. Penalties like this, not bad field position. Here you are on the 31-yard line going all the way back. That will be the call against the Scarlet Knights, and that will push them back. The ball was carried ahead to the 31-yard line. Take a look at this, and take a look at the top corner of your screen. Right there's number 28, Derek there. Ward, coming in. And uh, 
and uh, coming in and, and knocking about the old eyes didn't feel me on that one. David Lightcap on the special teams for West Virginia was the Mountaineer who was hit from behind and that will take the ball back to the 17 yard line. One minute and 45 seconds to play in our opening quarter. West Virginia scored on its opening possession of the game as Chad Johnston went deep to Love It Purnell. A 49 yard touchdown catch. Mountaineers then added on a field goal following a Rutgers fumble to make it 10 to nothing. Scarlet Knights came back as Ray Lucas connected on a bomb to Stephen Harper that went for 77 yards. Rutgers then missing the extra point and a field goal attempt. This is Terrell Willis, looks to run the corner, and the Mountaineer defense is there, short of the 20-yard line. Back to our Biggie Studios now with a score update. Here's John Sanders. Earlier, Tony, we showed you a long touchdown pass by Purdue, but watch this run by Edwin Watson. He will break free right up the middle, cuts it back to the left. This is a 63-yard touchdown romp. It gives Purdue a 14-7 lead. They're still in the first quarter. Longest run from scrimmage in 10 years for the Boilermakers. Back to Morgantown. Thank you, John. One minute and 38 seconds remain here in the opening quarter. The Scarlet Knights looking at second down and eight after a two-yard pickup from Terrell Willis. Quick drop. And this is Reggie Funderburk. Met knocked out of bounds by Mike Logan at the Now, again, side. Mike Logan is just a great defensive back. Tremendous hit. Keep him from the first down. And uh, I think these are the things that uh, make uh, an excellent defensive unit by West Virginia. Watch Mike Logan balance up and take a good dip and hit and drive him out of bounds and stop him from getting the first down. So it makes a long, hard third down and a long one. And now we'll see some short yardage offense and defense here and see what's going on. Big play for Rutgers to maintain field position and get a chance to keep moving the football down, down the football field and turn it over. Third down and a long yard. Full house backfield and Presley is stopped short. They've got him down at the 25-yard line. No game. It's on West the Virginia's play. day. West Virginia's day, Tony. They really penetrated and smashed him on off. It's just a wonderful thing. Uh, uh, here's the, the, the watch the penetration. See that he's at no place to go. Everybody's on this side of the line of scrimmage. And I you can't emphasize enough that Sanu Curtis is in on the thing. But Henry Slay, that's the two outstanding frontmen for West Virginia doing the job at what counts. Punt team in. That's Rashawn Vanterpool back deep to return for West Virginia. Jared Sloan kicking away for the Scarlet Knights. There's a chance for Rashawn to come make some plays. And he knifes his way. Across the 45-yard line, down to the 47. A 37-yard punt from Sloan, seven yards on the return for Vanterpool. Robert Seeger defensively there for the Scarlet Knights to make the tackle. So West Virginia will take it over, leading 10 to 6, with 45 seconds to play here in our opening quarter. Now, other than one defensive back being sloppy and not paying attention to what's going on, West Virginia's played an outstanding football game in all areas today. With excellent field position, here they continue to play right in the first quarter. Matt McCulty, the motion man for West Virginia. This time, the Mountaineers begin an offensive possession on the ground. And Jimmy Gary carries it down to the 44-yard line. Mack, the first, or I should say, the last two offensive possessions for West Virginia had begun with passes that were incomplete, forcing West Virginia into second and long and third and long. This time, the Mountaineers keep it on the ground on first down. Well, the other thing about it, it's number 21. This is Jimmy Gary's day. He's hot. You'll see Donnie start feeding the, uh, the I'm sure that Dan Simmer will be calling his number because he is doing a very, he's very having a very productive day. And he's hot and ready to go. When you have him, feed him. <laughs> he's hungry. <laughs> Close enough to a first down, and so they will bring the chains over from the far side. Coming up at halftime, we invite you to stay tuned. We will take a look at the standout tight end for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, Marco Battaglia, who to this point has not been a factor in the game. As they stretch it out, Gary is short of the carry. That was on a first down play, so it'll be second down and less than a full yard for the Mountaineers. I think this is the second or third time on the Big East Network we've had referee John Smith with us. 
and uh, he does a wonderful job of controlling a game. Just what a uh, what a Big East or any referee official should do. He's the boss here. Gives it, represents them all, and I think he does a good job. Saw West Virginia linebacker Jamie Sweeney getting a wrap job on his ankle. Sweeney starting today in place of Elijah Longino for West Virginia at the weak side linebacker spot. Longino, normally the starter, he's out with an ankle sprain, and the Mountaineers can't afford uh, Sweeney. That shows you slow. the depth, though, with uh, Fernando Russ out also, and they're still playing excellent defense with their linebackers. Also. On second down, the Mountaineers is going to go for it. Down for. Intended receiver Sean Foreman and that's the first time that Sean Foreman has been on that side of the football we've got a penalty marker back downfield but Foreman penalty will go against Rutgers Foreman is a converted defensive back they moved him to receiver this week trying to get some more speed downfield for the Mountaineers pass incomplete however Rutgers will be penalized on the play well the other thing about it is I'm sure it's on roughing the pass here comes the official he'll tell us Let's listen First in. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense, 15 yards, previous spot, automatic first down. I just get done telling you John Smith does a good job. That's his call. He's there to protect the referee, protects the quarterback. Oh, yes, that's late. Sean Devlin Jr. was in there. Johnston, you see, made his uh, plea to John Smith, the official, and... Uh, the result was the 15-yard penalty. You got to give credit to Derek Ward, the cornerback for Rutgers. He did a great job playing that streak on that thing. Wonderful defense, but negated by the penalty. And Troy Barber on first down and head to the 20-yard line. A pickup of eight yards on the play. Free safety, Charles Wiley makes the stop on Barber. That will keep the clock winding, and that will do it for our opening quarter of play from Morgantown at Mountaineer Field, West Virginia. On top after our first 15 minutes of action, it's the Mountaineers 10, the Scarlet Knights 6. We'll be back in second quarter action after this. Ball game, and knowing just exactly how they should move the football. Things are going well for the Mountaineers today here at uh, Mountaineer Field. Wide turn for Jimmy Gary and a nice job defensively by Cameron Chadwick of Rutgers to knock him down after a two-yard pickup. Once again, we see that formation from West Virginia, something that they put in this week, a split backfield, trying to load it up onto the right-hand side. West Virginia had the blockers out there, but Rutgers did a good job to string the play out. Well, the thing about it, two yards, you move the chains. Now it's first and 10 again, down inside the 20. Uh, it's where you want to be. You want That's all you need out of the football play when you're running the football. They keep it wide. And that's what I said earlier, and what happens already is that Kent Roy Barber is the key. They'll keep giving it to him inside so they can have the outside running game going from there. Again on the ground, this is Jimmy Gary. Gary into the end zone for the touchdown. Missed tackles will kill you. There was somebody there to make the play. But again, Kent Roy Barber knocked him out of the football game. And uh, they missed the tackle on the six-yard line. It's uh, number 21, Tom Kelly. You don't really like to name some people individual that way, but uh, you've got to make those hits. The extra point is on the way and good for West Virginia's Brian Bauman and the Mountaineers. Start off the second quarter much like they began the game with a quick touchdown. Jimmy Gary, the senior from Okeechobee, Florida, scores his third touchdown of the season. West Virginia takes its lead out to 11, 17 to 6. The Mountaineers on top. <laughs> Nineteen ninety five marks the one hundredth season of Big Ten conference football action. Celebrate the centennial anniversary of the Big Ten by ordering this commemorative home video chronicling one hundred years of football and men's basketball. For just nineteen ninety nine, you can relive the rich tradition and proud legacy of gridiron legends from Grange to Griffin and basketball greats such as Lucas, Magic, and the Fab Five. To order, call one eight hundred Big Ten Four or send nineteen ninety nine plus five dollars shipping and handling to the address shown. The family 
Stadium. The future will have many hundreds of a touchdown and an 11 point lead. You know, he's from Florida, but he, he kind of likes this weather. You know, he's all bundled up and here he goes right into the end zone on the thing. Makes a guy miss a tackle, struts around a little bit. And uh, who wants to be in 70 or 80 degrees when you could be in West Morgantown, West Virginia, playing in this kind of weather? Snow flurries. Is that two touchdowns for him today? Uh, oh, Purnell, Purnell had, had the, the first other one. one. Gary had the uh, second one. Good start for uh, Jimmy Gary. 18-yard run there. Gary, so far this afternoon, has rushed for 52 yards on eight carries. Yeah, that's what I wanted to know. Eight carries, 52 yards. Kickoff. Brad Hackett with the kickoff, and this will be taken by Terrell Willis. And West Virginia will roll him down over the 25-yard line. Rob Keyes makes the tackle. Opening numbers through the first quarter of action. Take a look at the time of possession. West Virginia held onto the ball for over 11 minutes. The Scarlet Knights less than four minutes with the ball. Yeah, the first series, first play was a fumble that caused a lot of it. Now. Rutgers has got to answer the call. This is a critical time of the football game, down 17-6. to six. They've got to make something happen to keep them up mentally and then this football game early in the second quarter. Down 17-6. to six. Your losing record doesn't hold well unless they get something going. This is Bruce Presley trying the interior of the West Virginia defensive front. Mac, I would have to say that uh, if Rutgers is going to get something going offensively, they've got to get the ball in the hands of Marco Battaglia, who has been blanked so far. Well, I, I don't even think they've tried to you know, double team. It's West Virginia. The quarterback is making the right decision not to throw to him. Do I like that, Bruce Presley? That is Dave Bruce. Bruce Presley. Number 44. He'll, he'll, he'll hit you. You give him the football by the fourth quarter, he'll start getting some yardage. He's a big load, 215 pounds at just five feet, 10 inches tall. Yeah, good play. Lucas flushed and finds his target. There's Marco Battaglia. No, that's Marco Battaglia making the quarterback look good. They're calling it incomplete. Yep, they're huh? going to rule it incomplete. The official came from behind the play and rules it incomplete. The pass was low. Van Washington of West Virginia. On the coverage, take a look here. Lucas yep. flushed out of the pocket, looking for Battaglia. I'm anxious to see what, but Marco thinks he got it here. I'd like to see what happened on the okay, Where is down low, rolled off of his leg. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Yep. Contact just as uh, he made contact with the turf. That puts Rutgers now. Great looking call. Third down and five. Lucas with the quick drop. And he cannot hold on. Again, that pass is low. Beasley on the coverage for West Virginia. And the Scarlet Knights now looking at fourth down. Again, great read by Ray Lucas. Right in Bruce's hands. Now lower to the inside. Not too good of a play, but Aaron Beasley was right there to lay a hit on him. Excellent defense by West Virginia. West Virginia nearly came away with the block there. On the return, this is Rashawn Vanterpool with field ahead. Crosses over midfield, and back the punter, Jared Sloan, runs him out of bounds inside Scarlet Knight territory at the 38-yard line. A 31-yard punt, a 26-yard return for West Virginia's Rashawn Vanterpool. The Mountaineers will have a good starting point, but uh, hang tight. Penalty once again on the play. When you see those flags, it's usually on the return team. Somebody turns the body, and uh, the officials have got to call it because it's cut down on so many injuries when you stop people from getting behind. That stops the clock with 13 minutes and 25 seconds to play here in the opening half. West Virginia leads it 17 to 6 over the Scarlet Knights. And the Mountaineers already backpedaling as John Smith and crew talk about the infraction. During the return holding, return team, the 10 yard penalty is assessed from the spot of the foul, first down. You know, again, takes away something that's so beautiful by Vanderpool and you talk about field position the ball is now on the uh, 31 yard line the minus 31 69 yards to go when it's set up here over on the other side of the field with less than 40 to go 
Those are stupid penalties. And West Virginia, like Rutgers, can have those things and be a winning football team Saturday, each Saturday of the season. Mountaineers on a toss play for Jimmy Gary. Down to the 38-yard line, he'll gain six yards on the play, and Jimmy Gary is doing his best job you of running about, the football so far this season. You talk about great timing in terms of kick out and a seal down, and Jimmy's making the exposure right into the thing. I think that uh, you know one of the things we talk about from a field position standpoint, Rutgers has been starting all the way back on their own 32-yard line, and West Virginia really has been starting in about the same place, so they've been moving the football a lot better than Rutgers from an offensive standpoint. This is the fullback, Cantroy Barber. He loses the football. Loose ball. Scarlet Knights say they have it. No call yet from the officials as they begin to loosen up the pile. No call yet. West Virginia. And there it is. The Scarlet Knights have the football. Cantroy Barber coughs it up over the 35. I'm not sure 35. he coughs it up. I'm not sure he ever had the thing. I think it was a poor mishandle. See, the ball. Yes, he has it. Nice legs. call, Tony. He has it. He just very sloppily carries it right down at his crotch, and on the hit, it comes right out on him. True freshman Aaron Brady, the outside linebacker, was there to pounce on top of the football. Now, these are what you call bad turnovers. You're in the very positive side of the football field, the 37-yard line. This is the break that Rutgers need to stay in the football game. Now let's see what they do with the football. They're great vaunted runners. They could keep the ball on the ground right here and get into the end zone. Lucas to throw on first down. Fires for Battaglia incomplete. Beasley on the coverage. Time for a score update to our Big East Studios. Here's John Sanders. In Starkville this afternoon, Arkansas trying to lock up a spot in the SEC title game. Barry Lunny over the middle to Anthony Eubanks. The touchdown makes it 14-7 Arkansas over Mississippi State. Let's go back to Morgantown, gentlemen. Thanks, John. Taglia, the intended receiver, cannot hold on. That'll make it second down and 10. So far, the big offense this afternoon for Rutgers, a 77-yard touchdown pass from Ray Lucas to Stephen Harper. This is Willis running hard, but coming up to make the play, Bernardo Amerson after a five-yard pickup last week. Amerson uh, really didn't see much action because of the emergence of Bernard Russ of West Virginia. Amerson was a starter for the Mountaineers early on this season when Russ was uh, hampered by a hip injury. You watch the film, though, there's not too much difference between the two. Two excellent football players, and that's what makes it a good defense when you have people that can replace the people that are in there. Big play right here, third down and five for Rutgers. They need a touchdown in this situation. Can they move the chains? Lucas throwing on the run, and the pass intercepted by Aaron Beasley. His fifth pickoff of the season. And Beasley will keep it over the midfield mark, looking for a block. Cuts it back, and Battaglia, back downfield, makes the tackle at the 27-yard line. Somebody down on the football field. An injured man is back downfield with the celebration on the other end for West Virginia. It's a great intercept. Now you'll see Ray Lucas running to his right and throwing back to his left. Very, very difficult thing to do and uh, really hurt him. He should have stopped, set his feet because there was no doubt in my mind that the you see. But you know, you've got a, Aaron Beasley right here is one of the leading interceptors in the country. Just an outstanding football player. 19th career interception for Aaron Beasley. West Virginia will have it back when we return to Mountaineer Field. Morgantown, West Virginia on top, 17 to 6. Elation at one point here for the Mountaineers following an interception return. I imagine he probably was a great receiver at one time. They're out of Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Pottstown, PA. Attended Valley Forge Military Academy before coming to. West Virginia. So we're ready to resume action. West Virginia with a first down and 10 from the Scarlet Knights 26 yard line and Chad Johnston is going to throw as David Saunders and the freshman receiver from Palatine, Illinois takes it down to the four yard line. Second catch of the afternoon for David Saunders. It goes for 21 yards. No, we send it back to the Big East with John Sanders, but this is David Saunders. 
who is uh, just a marvelous receiver and going to be uh, everybody in the Big East talking about him as only a freshman with three more years to play for the Mountaineers. West Virginia now looks at first down and goal from inside the five yard line. This is Jimmy Carey who's already run one in here in the second quarter. He'll be stopped short. If only a block is Jimmy. You went where the white shirts were. You're supposed to go where the black shirts are. This is a, you know, I think he's having an outstanding day and things are going well for him. Second down in, in almost, uh, what is it, in, is inside the five around the three yard line. Yeah, down inside the uh, three yard line for the Mountaineers. They look at second down and goal. West Virginia on top, 17 to six on the ground. This is Leroy White. Robert Walker one gene ahead, ball. and he will be stopped short. Correction. Brian Sheridan and Cameron Chadwick the make the stop there on Leroy White. We had mentioned that uh, Beasley was from Valley Forge Military Academy. So was uh, Leroy uh, White before coming to West Virginia. Brian attended Sheridan. the prep school, and that time he uh, launched a little early. And without much, it, oh, I don't think that's it. Leroy should use the power and keep those legs churning like all good fullbacks. Let the halfbacks jump. <laughs> down inside the one yard line. This is third down and goal. Leroy White again, and he will be stopped short. That'll make it fourth down from inside the one yard line. 17 to 6. I think you'll probably see Coach Dealing go for it down there again. But what a hit by Rashawn Giddings. The linebacker on the play that kept him out of the end zone. And again, you can tell one of the most exciting things is a goal line stand and a goal line offense. Good trying to get in. Fourth down and what less than one yard to go. Watch the hit here by number 57 with Sean Giddings come into the play. Just a great hit. No, nope, Sheridan's in on it also. Well, the Mountaineers are going to go for it on fourth down and goal. Inside the one, and now West Virginia's Chad Johnston will use up a timeout. That'll stop it with nine minutes and 33 seconds to play. Don Nealon will talk things over with Chad Johnston. The Mountaineers will go for it when we return to Morgantown. Three out of four new car radiators are made of aluminum, lightweight aluminum, as thin as the top of this can. This year, over 400,000 aluminum radiators will pit, corrode, and fail. Protect your car in the Prestone Zone. Prestone antifreeze bonds with aluminum, forming the Prestone Zone of dual protection against corrosion and temperature extremes. Don't put your car at risk. Protect it in the Prestone Zone. This is the Hair Loss Update. If you're confused and need to know more about your hair loss, experts agree. You should call the industry leader in hair restoration, Men's Hair Now. Now the MHN Hair Institute has perfected a totally new approach to end hair loss. Call their 24-hour hotline at 1-800-835-HAIR for the latest information on hair loss prevention and restoration. MHN can help both men and women. For your hair restoration consumer guide and a free evaluation, call 1-800-835-HAIR, 1-800-835-HAIR. This is John Sanders in the Big East studio, inviting you to join us at half. Seconds to play in the half, and that is the distance between another touchdown for West Virginia. They're looking at fourth down from inside the one-yard line. Chad Johnson had to call a timeout before because of the clock. Now, here comes Jimmy Gary, and it's his day. Touchdown. Jimmy Gary with his second touchdown of the quarter. When you're hot, you're hot. When you're not, you're not. And they're hot today after two long weeks of no touchdowns. It's, uh, it's exciting for the West Virginia Mountaineer fans here. And you got to give credit to Rutgers, the wonderful thing they did in terms of pounding and making sure they kept them out of the end zone. There you are. Fullback, Leroy White threw a nice block there, and uh, Jimmy Gary stretches the play out. The extra point from Ryan Bauman is good, and West Virginia capitalizes on the interception from Aaron Beasley and builds its lead to 24-6. to 24-6. to six. Kickoff will be fielded by Terrell Willis from inside the five-yard line. He is dangerous, and here comes Terrell Willis. Turns it to he the goes, open field. Terrell Willis. It back and a beautiful return.
from Willis as he carries it ahead to the 34 yard line finally brought down by Kerry Siveran a week ago Terrell Willis returned a kickoff 83 yards for a touchdown against the Pitt Panthers in doing so he was named the Big East Conference's special teams player of the week surely from an offensive standpoint you talk about Willis you talk about Presley you talk about Bataglia you talk about the quarterback Ray Lucas they've got some pie power and they've got to get it going right now to get back in this game still haven't heard anything from Marco Bataglia yet the All-American tight end has been held without a catch and Terrell Willis cuts back and he is cut there by Canute Curtis well, he, lose he bounced out to Canute, but the defense that took place inside, I think Lando has uh, really helped a lot on that football play by making him bounce to the outside. Interior defensive line from West Virginia, Mac, has done a good job this afternoon against this offensive line of Rutgers. Yeah, and I, you know, your linebacker, you were talking about a little bit earlier that Hammerson came in because of Bernardo Russ's out. They say you don't lose much when he's in the football game. Second down and 13. Here's Bruce Presley. He's going to throw the football wide open. It's Chad Bosch. Bosch to the 35, the 30. And finally, he is hit from behind by Beasley and dropped inside the 20-yard line. Bruce Presley. That's the second pass that he has attempted this season. This one goes for 50 yards. Well, Stan Paris is the offensive coordinator there. Does a great job in selecting plays. They pitch the ball so everybody can see that it's there. Makes everybody rush up and take care of the play. Very good technique. Chad just blocks and heads down football field. Watch right at here at the end. You see Beasley come in trying to strip that ball out as he makes the hit. Can they keep him out of the end zone? Rutgers, can we get to the end zone? 18-yard line, big, big play. Could keep them in the game. See the story inside the 20-yard line. The Scarlet Knights have been effective this season. This is Presley again, and this time he's going to carry it. Down the sideline he goes, and he is knocked out of bounds. Inside the five-yard line, they'll give him the four for number 44. Fourth out of bounds by number one, Van Washington. You know, again, you're talking about a 2-5 football team late in the season. They don't give up. And Presley, Willis made, gave them excitement on the kickoff, and the coach made a great call in terms of the pitch pass. Uh, now they're down on the four-yard line, first down. Ezra Johnson and Presley in the backfield. Again, they go to Bruce Presley as he tries to find some running room. He'll be stopped shy of the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Bernardo Amerson in on the tackle along with number 44. That is Jason Williams. Now Williams becomes a big factor for the Mountaineers as he has come on to replace JT Thomas who was uh, injured here in the second quarter. I, I think that uh, just getting back to the line of scrimmage is a credit to him. He had to run downhill to get there. I think they're going to wisely stay with the uh, with the offense that they have in the football game and gone to the shotgun formation. Roll out by Lucas. He'll Here's take it Lucas. himself. Very Ray Lucas with the touchdown for the Scarlet Knights. A four-yard run for the senior from Harrison, New Jersey. That's the first sign of uh, of the whole offense staying together and marching down the football field. Big play off the halfback pass. Another look, and this is the big dimension that Ray Lucas can offer this uh, offense uh, for Rutgers. Not only is he a very adept passer, he gives that team the ability to run the perimeter. And again, uh, they, he broke the contain of the thing. They had some linebacker pressure, but he did not contain it to let the inside pursuit get to it. Touchdown. Nick Mickemeyer, who missed his first extra point, misses again. Mickemeyer has missed two extra points and a field goal. And West Virginia's lead will hold at 12. And obviously, Doug Graber is uh, incredulous over there with seeing two extra points be hit off the mark. Well, whatever incredulous means, he must be, uh, it, whatever that means, he's doing it. I'm going along with you on that one. Take another look at it uh, here, and you often say extra points are automatic. See if his foot does not hit the ground before it hits the ball. Yes, it did. I don't really think that's the problem. I think uh, 
he is uh, he, he it's into his head now it's out his foot it's head that's doing the kicking on the thing and with 12 points you can be sure the next time they score if they do it'll be a two-point play I don't think that Nick Mick Meyer is going to have much of a chance to get back in here again this afternoon on a critical situation he's had his chance West Virginia defensive line coach Bill Kerlavich is talking with his defensive unit. For the most part, they have done a good job, but uh, they were beaten on a bit of trickery there as Bruce Presley connected long distance with Chad Bosch to set up the touchdown for the Scarlet Knights. Kowski's kickoff will be fielded from the five yard line. This is Rashawn Vanderpool. He quickly carries it ahead, the shy of the 40-yard line. Well, Rashad had a slow start, but he's back into the mode now. He's uh, he's got he's got the feel of playing football again, and I think you'll find him having a good afternoon from now on. 29 yards on the return for Rashawn Vanterpool, West Virginia once again with a good starting point. Uh, Mac, you were here last Saturday, and uh, West Virginia would uh, dream for this kind of uh, field position against Virginia Tech. They were starting inside their own 15 and 10 yard line. Yeah, people have got to understand that this is something that you need is good field position, or you're going to have a problem. Rutgers now will call a timeout before West Virginia goes to work. That will stop the clock with seven minutes and 11 seconds to play. Life on the road has not been fun for Doug Graber of Rutgers in his uh, six seasons. With the Scarlet Knights, they have won just four times on the road. Now, at home on campus at Rutgers Stadium, they've done a fantastic job. They're 16 and three, but uh, winning on the road has been very difficult for the Scarlet Knights. You know, they came up over the ball, ready to go, and uh, having enough trouble stopping it with 11 men. They had they had 10 ins, so very wisely, the defensive quarterback uh, Sheridan called a timeout. You can see the look of disgust on uh, Coach Graber's face because the least we can do is get enough men in the football game to play. Those kind of things that hurt you. And yet, Mac, uh, not a real big surprise considering all the personnel changes that they've had back there in the defensive backfield. They're using a lot of true freshmen, and uh, oftentimes an assignment just like that could be missed. Yeah, usually the freshmen, they like to get in there too much. <laughs> John Lutz has come in at a tight end for West Virginia. That's David Saunders in motion. West Virginia is going to answer the call here. And those are the kind of plays that you need to keep the, everybody off balance. I, I think, you know, they talked yesterday about Giddings and what kind of a player he is. Sheridan and Giddings will make big plays for you all day defensively. There's another one by Rashawn Giddings, number 57. Senior from Montreal who comes into the game tied for third on the team with 43 tackles. Inside of seven minutes now in the second quarter. Scarlet Knights showing blitz. Johnston fires and has Matt McCulty and they will rule the ball dead. Good catch, but dead at the 50-yard line. McCulty, who's from Spencer, West Virginia, went down to a knee to make the catch. They'll pick up eight yards and a first down. You know, usually when you run those inside patterns, you expect about a lot of traffic around. He turned around expecting to get a hit on the thing, and so he just uh, put the knee down, the whistle blows, and uh, the play is over. Sean by Foreman. It. Mark made sure he had the ball. That's what counts. Move the chains. Sean Foreman, the converted defensive back, out there for West Virginia, lined up as a receiver out to the right. Johnston looks for Sean Foreman. Foreman, contact and an incomplete pass. Mike Sandy and Foreman collide as Johnston put too much on that one. Again, uh, I think you'll find that the corners are playing outstanding for Rutgers. The inside safeties, they've lost four inside safeties. They're playing freshmen. I think that's where your problem is. I think Sandy does a great job of in terms of taking care of it. People think it's pass interference, but Sandy has just as much right to that football play as the West Virginia guy has. Very clearly, make sure that he catches it nobody does. On second down, Johnston again looks downfield, but again overthrows his intended receiver, Rashawn Vanterpool. Johnston now five of ten passing. And that will leave West Virginia looking at third down and 10. Third down. 
so far this afternoon. The Mountaineers, two and five on third down conversions. I think you'll see one of one on fourth down conversions. He'll go to the play action series here, run a drag drill to the wide side of the football field, get a guy in first down situation right there to hit him. Oh. Saunders makes the catch, fumbles the football, and recovers his yep. fumble. First down for West Virginia. Derek Ward. The quarterback on the play made a nice hit there. Number 28 popped into Saunders. That ball came loose as he tried to spin away, but he was able to get back on top of it. Very, very conservative. Correct call. The play action. Go to first down depth. Catch the football. Protect it now. That's all we need to do is move the chains. And uh, David was, got real sloppy with the football and was lucky to be able to recover it. West Virginia moves the ball inside Rutgers territory to the 40-yard line. Jimmy Gary picks up a tough yard. True freshman Peter Clark from his cornerback spot. Clark's an interesting story. You won't find his uh, name, number, or picture in the Rutgers media guide. He was a late qualifier academically. In fact, did not become eligible until the Scarlet Knights played Syracuse. Uh, an outstanding high school tailback at JFK High School in the Bronx. Last season, he rushed for over 1,000 yards and leading JFK to the public high school championship in New York. This drive is not uh, Coach Steelers kind of drive. They're throwing the football a lot more than they're passing it. Now they're going back to the run game and see what happens. Good job by Rutgers. Rashawn Giddings leading the charge along with Peter Clark. No gain on the play that time for Jimmy Gary. They've had two runs now that have not made much, so it's third down and long again, but in good field position. I'm sure you'll see pretty much the same kind of thing going for the first down distance with their receivers getting the first down and moving the chains. But I can't emphasize enough that Sandy and Ward, the two corners, have done a great job. And uh, they've still got the tight end of the football game to the weak side. Probably going to see 82 get used on this play. Only staying in to protect. Johnston has time, has back to the First down, West Virginia. A 22-yard reception as Chad Johnston once again makes a beautiful toss on a third down conversion attempt. Last time he went to David Saunders, this time to Rashawn Vanterpool. Again, you've kept a great tight end to block. We had good protection on the football play, and now they run a corner pattern and gets the five under two deep. They jump the thing, and it's just an excellent call and wonderful execution. Probably Chad's best pass of the day, other than the touchdown to Levette Purnell on the first series. First and 10 on the 16-yard line. Mountaineers leading it by 12. 24 to 12 is the score. On the toss play. This is Gary with a hole. Sheds a tackler and is knocked out of bounds at the 12 yard line. Three yards on the play. Well, Mac, we saw Jimmy Gary start this afternoon and we saw a little bit of Robert Walker. Back they go to Gary. He has scored two touchdowns here in this second quarter. You know, I think that uh, he's running with a lot of confidence. He's running through tackles. Uh, they're, they're over shifting and shifting the people around, doing an excellent job offensively. Uh, but quite candidly, I think that uh, Rutgers is doing a good job against him defensively. This time they'll use the fullback, Troy Barber. And he bulls his way down to the five yard line, and that will be another West Virginia first down on an eight yard pickup for the senior from Miami. Now, can Roy Barber is what you want out of a fullback, and you slip on the ball as, as long as they've gone wide like this. It opens up the hole to the inside. As you can see, uh, we had an overrunning football play by uh, by Rashawn Giddings because he's trying to get outside to Gary, which makes this football play go. First and goal for the Mountaineers. Again on the ground, Gary looking for his third touchdown here of the quarter is down to the two-yard line. Once again, Giddings there to make that tackle for the Scarlet Knights. Jimmy Gary is the nephew of uh, former Miami and NFL running back Cleveland Gary. I think uh, this is uh, Jimmy just on first down, getting what he can, making sure he hangs onto the football. About on the one and a half yard line, one and a half to go on second down. I'm sure you'll see him powered right in. But the set you see here, it's a uh, Jimmy Gary football. This is Gary on 
his way. He'll be stopped short. Good tackle there by Tom Kelly of Rutgers. No gain on the play. It looked at the, as though it was there, but Kelly quickly tightened up the hole. Well, the play was not designed to go out there. It's Jimmy Gary freelancing on the thing. He's got to take it, powered right in, but by the same token, Sheridan's waiting right in the hole for him and bouncing the outside. Excellent defense. Then Tom Kelly comes in and makes a good tackle. They actually lost a half yard of that football play. Third down. 13th play of the drive for West Virginia. Tossing it again to Jimmy Gary, and he's on his way in for his third touchdown of the quarter. Again, here's the pitch. There, there is a, you know, you talk about uh, the fullback, you got to have a big, strong guy to make the football plays, and uh, what happens on the football play, Ken Roy Barber leads it right into the, in the game, just exactly the way he should. Brian Bauman bags the extra point, Jimmy Gary with his third touchdown of the quarter, his fifth touchdown of the season, gives West Virginia a 31 to 12 lead with two minutes and 33 seconds to play here in the second quarter. Balls on the four or five yard line. Gary up the middle, Gary to the left, Gary to the right, touchdown. Uh, I wonder if people are a little upset with Coach Nealon's uh, offense today. Here it is, 31 to 12 at halftime. And Mac is uh, making reference, obviously, uh, to the fact that West Virginia had scored uh, in its last two games. The uh, talk show callers have been questioning the offensive strategy. Uh, and uh, when plays work, plays work, right, Mac? Well, I think that people should take a look at field position, turnovers, bad punting, and don't talk about the offense. Talk about things that need to be corrected. You're punting a thing and making sure you, do, you don't turn the ball over, which has been the problem with them. I think this is a good offense. I think these are good people playing it. But the strength of that defense is the uh, of the West Virginia team is that defense. And he has to play to the strength. And, you know, they're, they're going to be alive, it looks like, after this game. And poor Rutgers uh, doesn't look too good for them right now. They've got to get something going with two minutes and 33 seconds to go in the first half here. Brad Hackett's kickoff will be fielded by Terrell Willis from the two. job to avoid the tackle as he spins free. The ball comes loose on the play. West Virginia says that it has the football. I don't think so. I think they almost had the football. But what would you expect West Virginia to indicate? Well, I think Rod Allen saw that they were going to but I think he saw it. Rutgers guy fall on the right edge because he was standing right here. Look, Rutgers ball. John Smith, the referee, makes the signal. Rutgers, Rutgers will maintain the possession. That's all that uh, the Scarlet Knights needed, needed there was to give the ball up inside the 25-yard line. So with two minutes and 22 seconds remaining here in the second quarter, you take a look at West Virginia's last scoring drive, 61 yards on 13 plays as Jimmy Gary scores his third touchdown of the quarter. That uh, already better than doubles Gary's touchdown production so far this season. He came into the game, as mentioned, with two, and now he has five on the season. Makes to see if they'll run a two-minute offense here and get things moving for themselves, or they're going to run the ball and take it in and have to. Toss play to Terrell Willis as he turns it upfield. Knocked out of bounds by Charles Emanuel. We invite you to stay tuned. Coming up at halftime, we'll go back to our Big East studios. John Sanders will update you with scores from across the country. We'll also have an in-depth look at just a, a great football player and a very affable football guy off the field and on. We're talking about Marco Battaglia the top tight end in the Big East Conference, and many believe the top tight end in the entire nation. Uh, Mrs. Gould, I want you to know that was your son, that freshman that recovered that fumble, so I do not want you to know that I didn't catch that. Great play by Lewis Gold to recover the thing. Lucas throwing on first down, and that is Marco Battaglia who makes the reception. First catch. I think you'll see Battaglia moving down the 
Rutgers offense trying to move them down the football field in a two minute offense now. They got good field position and uh, 153 left to go in the half and I think they've got two timeouts left. Yep, each team has two timeouts remaining. Taking too much time in selecting plays here. On the ground, the inside give goes to Terrell Willis, and he tries to knife around Canute Curtis, and he is brought down. Got to be a little bit more aware of where he is, because all he had to do was get ahead just a little bit to stop the clock. Because in college ball, when you get a first down, it stops the clock. He made eight yards of the play, and I think he made the first down. Yes, he did. And they'll move the chains to the 45-yard line. 126 to go, two timeouts. 126 to go, 55 yards to go. I'm sure we'll see a two-point play if they score. Deep drop for Lucas, and now the pocket collapses as he tries to dump it off incomplete to Terrell Willis, and that will freeze the clock with one minute and eight seconds showing. Good job that time by West Virginia defensive tackle John Browning, who came across and uh, affected Lucas's throw of the ball. John Browning, he, he affects a lot of uh, quarterbacks. He gets them nervous. Great pass rusher. Just too bad that he's been hurt all year, but you would have to admire the effort that he gives every Saturday afternoon when he gets in there. He makes a mark as soon as he gets into a football game. I think Ray Lucas was just throwing that ball away because he threw it low at him to stop the clock. On second down, West Virginia reads the toss play on the reverse to Stephen Harper, and they knock him down at the 42-yard line. Good job there by Bob Baum of West Virginia, the rush side linebacker, a three-yard loss on the play for Stephen Harper. Again, it's, uh, it's a uh, counter play reverse off the sprint, which they've run so well. It's an excellent football play, but with backside people rushing upfield in a two-minute offense, I'm not sure that it's a great call at the time because uh, he just didn't have a chance to go anywhere. There were two defenders over there just stringing him out to the sideline. Luckily, he got out of bounds to stop the clock. 55 seconds remain. As you can see, third down has not been a good down for Rutgers. They are 0 of 5, and now they're looking at third down and 13. Thunderbird, Harper, and Chad Bosch out as receivers. Five receivers in the formation for the Scarlet Nobody Knights. back there with them. Lucas throwing deep. The pass is incomplete. Charles Emanuel made a break on the ball. Bill Powell, the intended receiver, as Lucas misfires, and that will bring it up to fourth down. Well, I think Charles Emanuel did the, the great thing by coming up over the top of the of uh, the receiver trying to get to the football. You know, uh, Rutgers is zero and six on third down. Tremendous credit to the West Virginia defense in the long passing situations on third down defense. Jared Slovin on for the punt attempt. High spiraling kick, fair catch will be called for as Rashad Vanterpool takes a hop with it and a 40-yard punt for Jared Slovin. Excellent punt. There's a lot of uh, a lot of height on it also. We'll check in on Miami and Baylor plus the Wisconsin-Purdue matchup and games from across the country with John Sanders in less than a minute from our Big East studios. And also we'll have that look at Marco Battaglia, who uh, many consider to be a legitimate first-round draft choice in the NFL. Gentlemen, back up, please, back up. Thank you. Well, uh, you can see that the West Virginia respects Marco because uh, they've double-teamed him all afternoon long. If they're going to beat him, Ray Lucas is going to have to go somewhere else with the football, and uh, it's just not happening yet. Good defensive game plan by Steve Dunlap and his crew on defense. Mountaineers are going to play it conservatively here with inside of uh, 40 seconds to go. They're in their own end. They're leading it 31 to 12. And Don Nealon says, let's just uh, pack it up and we'll get warm in the locker room for about 10 minutes or so. I don't think I worry about the West Virginia guys getting warm. This is a happy time for them. It's a uh, it's Rutgers uh, Scarlet Knights. They've got to go in at halftime and readjust. And they got a long way coming back uh, to get back in this football game. 
They'll that, have the ball though coming back. Yes, they will. Rutgers will have the uh, opening kickoff of the second half. Final seconds tick off the clock as West Virginia heads into the locker room with the 31 to 12 lead over the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Big second quarter for Jimmy Garrett. I mean, you can't ask for anything else. I mean, these guys, strong safety, thinks he's going to come off the line and go for a vertical up the field, and he's not going to have a chance to run with them. But it's not just his physical skills that make Battaglia an outstanding player. His attitude and work ethic are just as important. He has a good feel for the game. He's a man possessed. He wants to be a great player, and that's very important to him, and that's the first key to being a great player. So I think he has all those intangibles that are necessary. I think, all in all, I just want to improve my whole game. You know, you always want to improve everything. Somebody might say, you know, you should improve your blocking, you should improve your releasing, you should improve your pass back and catch a thousand balls. You just have, you always have to improve everything. To be the best, you always have to improve. You always have to improve. Marco also gives credit for his success to Ray Lucas, who has both been a friend and quarterback since they came to New Jersey. You know, since day one, me and Ray, we've been best friends ever since the first day of camp. And uh, me and him just gelled right away. There's little question that Marco Battaglia will get his shot at the NFL, but he's not looking too far ahead. Like I told every other reporter, you're only as good as your last game. And I've yet played to play 11 games this season. So, uh, you know, I just put it in the back of my mind and go forward. Here's Ray Lucas, a blown coverage by the Mountaineers. Well, it's just uh, really not a blown coverage. It just got sloppy in that coverage. And the thought that Ray was going to run with the ball came up, got behind the defenders, and just ran in the end zone. That's what Ray Lucas can do for the Rutgers offense, what he must do in the second half if they're going to win. Here's the Jimmy Gary show coming up. That's right. The second quarter belonged to Jimmy Gary. The senior from Okeechobee, Florida, scored three touchdowns in the second quarter. That one an 18-yard run. Rutgers staying close, though. It was 24 to 12. The Mountaineers were able to go once again on a deep penetration as Jimmy Gary on fourth down and less than a yard runs it in. You know, you know, I think the thing that you, everybody has to understand is that uh, it was just an excellent block and they broke the contain. I don't want to get in the way. Here's Ray Lucas again running into the, in the uh, touchdown, which is that thing I just mentioned. What the, he's got to be a little bit more explosive, take the game into his hands a little bit more in the second half if they're going to get some big plays to win this game. They can't pound it out with a score 31 to 12. Yeah, and West Virginia once again on the drive as Jimmy Sc Gary scores that third touchdown of the second quarter as the Mountaineers take a 31 to 12 lead. Numbers through the first half of play. Take a look at the possession time. West Virginia with nearly 20 wow. minutes in possession of that football. Now the Mountaineers were held to under 150 yards of total offense last week against Virginia Tech. Here today already 254 yards. Rutgers comes in as the total offense leader in the Big East Conference. So far 182 yards. And you know again we're talking about the turnover thing the special team thing. We'll get it. Rutgers is going to get the football right off the bat to start the second half with the score 31 to 12. They better do it real fast and real soon. An injury situation occurred in the second quarter of play. West Virginia's uh, top tackler, J.T. Thomas, uh, took a helmet-to-helmet -helmet shot, and uh, he was obviously in uh, some severe pain, not a great deal of motion as he lay on the field for about uh, 12 to 15 minutes. Uh, Mac, you've got an injury update. Well, I think what we uh, I didn't get the official word from the medical doctor, but from the press box people here, they've told me they think it's a real deep shoulder bruise. He was knocked out and then had some neck pain. They uh, don't think it's anything real, but they're doing an MRI and CAT scan and everything else over the great University of West Virginia uh, Medical Center over here. They think it's going to be good news. They'll give us an update as the second half. But as uh, far as the parents are concerned of J.T. Thomas and the friends, I think we're all right. Here's the kickoff second half. And Brad Hackett's kickoff will be taken by Chad Bosch from the nine-yard line. Bosch finds the seam, is spun around, and will be stopped at the 30-yard line. So a good starting position for the Scarlet Knights who find themselves down by 19. Ray Lucas and the Rutgers offense will get to work. Lucas just 3 of 12 passing. 
momentum in the second half is what it's all about in this first drive. Can West Virginia stop them? Can Rutgers move the football? And uh, everybody's alive and well from an offensive defensive standpoint. Let's we'll see what happens from 30 yards. Bruce Presley will get the opening carry of the second half, finds a hole, spins for a first down. A pickup on the play of 11 yards for Bruce Presley, the senior from Highland Park, New Jersey. Now, this is what uh, makes uh, Bruce Presley an outstanding running back, in my opinion. He's got the move, the, the dip in, sets up blocks all the way along the line, and then got the burst of speed, power, and maneuverability to get a first down on the first play of the second half, moves the ball out to the 42-yard line, which is the thing they've got to do, keep and reestablish a motion for Rutgers in the second half. Stephen Harper in motion on first down. The quick drop as Reggie Thunderbird takes the pass in. And he is knocked out of bounds by Mike Logan. Not before the Scarlet Knights pick up another quick 11 yards and a first down. Boy, that was uh, Mike Logan's got to be a little bit more ferocious on the tack because, you know, Reggie almost broke that thing. Watch how his, he tiptoes down the sidelines and there's nobody left. If he could have just stayed in bounds on this thing, see, his, see the feet moving? There's nothing left for uh, you know, only Amerson coming over, and I don't think it would have caught him if he could have got a burst of speed going. Just like that, Rutgers inside West Virginia territory. Once again, they'll run the toss play to Bruce Presley. And Canute Curtis is there to knock him out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Presley comes into this afternoon's game fourth all-time on the rushing list at Rutgers with 2,450 yards. He trails only teammate Terrell Willis J.J. Jennings and Glenn Keller you remember J.J. Jennings don't you J Holyoke Massachusetts one of the all-time greats he's uh, the all-time career rushing leader for, for J.J. a long time ago when I was coaching at UMass great running back for Rutgers motion up front on second down and four this is Terrell Willis and he will be brought down short of the first down marker at the 38-yard line. A pickup of three on the play as Jamie Sweeney and Charles Emanuel converge. And we talked about and we just saw that all-time rushing list at Rutgers. And number 31 and stands on top. He is just a junior. He'll be back next season, Terrell Willis. You know, Terrell's got to learn that first downs are important, not touchdowns. That's how you get touchdowns by first downs. All he had to do was just plow it ahead, move the chains along, started bouncing around. You could do that on first down, but not when you're going for a first. Third down and a yard. Willis hits and stops short of the first down marker. Mike Logan <laughs> makes the tackle for yes. the Mountaineers. You think Mike Logan is happy? That's a hit. Look at that little, that little butt just gave everything right into the thing. Take a listen to the sound down below. Nice play, Mike Logan. It's not Mike that gave the hit, though. The hit is inside that made the big play that caused him to bounce back. Detour the first down. Jared Slovin on for the punt. Hand over end kick. A fair catch will be called for by Rashawn Vanterpool, and he slides down to the 17-yard line. So the Scarlet Knights pick up. So a couple of first downs in succession. They are unable to advance the ball. West Virginia broken here this afternoon. We welcome you back. West Virginia on top 31 to 12. Today's Big East Conference game, a copy right of telecast of Creative Sports Incorporated and a use rebroadcast or other transmission of any or all of this game without the express prior written consent of Creative Sports is prohibited. So West Virginia following a 24-yard punt from Jared Slovin will take off on its own 16-yard line. Chad Johnston, who threw a touchdown pass in the first half of play, hands the ball off to Cantroy Barber, and West Virginia carries it ahead to the 21-yard line. Dick McPherson, you used to like the same type of attack with that fullback. When you were at Syracuse, you had a, several good ones, the best without question, uh, Daryl Johnston. Why is that fullback so important for this type of an attack? Well, I think that, you know, with a game like Jimmy Gary is having a tailback at an outside game, they're really flying to the outside and overshifting on the unbalanced line. Now you just shoot that linebacker, does two things, gains the out and most importantly keeps the pursuit at home to make Jimmy Gary better. 
second down. Johnston fires for Rashawn Vanderpool, and he slides over the 30, the 32-yard line. That's good for a West Virginia first down. Ten yards on the pickup for Rashawn Vanterpool, his third catch of the afternoon. The coverage there by number 14, Mike Sandy. And Charles Wally made the nice hit on the play, and Sandy's coming over there to double team. Excellent throw, though, and uh, Rashawn Vanderpool is looking like a much better football player. He's all warmed up, but it was very obvious early that he hadn't practiced all week. Motion man is David Saunders. West Virginia keeps it on the ground, and Jimmy Gary scoots it across the 35-yard line to pick up of four on the play. Talking to Desmond Robinson, West Virginia assistant coach in charge of the running backs yesterday, he said, I'm going to start Gary, give him the first opportunity. If he shines, we'll keep him in there. Otherwise, we'll go to Robert Walker. Well, Gary has done the job so far this afternoon. Now 78 yards on 19 carries and those three touchdowns that he scored in the second quarter. For Robert Walker, eight carries so far for 31 yards. The Mountaineers over 100 rushing yards. Johnston again fires that out cut for David Saunders and the freshman from Palatine, Illinois picks up another first down for the Mountaineers. By the way, in the first half of play, Saunders was in there for three catches and that breaks the all time reception record for a freshman at West Virginia that had been held by Steve Lewis. I think the thing that you had a safety blitz on that thing and great pickup of the blocks by the West Virginia offense and most especially Canroy, but Chad Johnson stayed in the pocket off the play action and zipped it out to David Sanders and uh, Saunders, that is, and uh, excellent offensive execution. Tough coverage by the defensive back all alone out there, one on one. Mountaineers make a shift now in their backfield. True freshman Curtis Keaton with the ball, his first carry of the afternoon, and he carries it ahead to the 46 yard line, a pickup of eight yards on the play. Right now, a score update. Let's head back to our Big East studios with John. And a break here, Tony, for the Hurricanes of Miami. They're on the move. The pass is complete to Carlo Joseph, but he drops the ball. The Bears should have recovered. They can't handle it. Right there is Tucker. He falls on it for Miami. They scored on the next play, and have opened it up now 28 to 7. Let's go back to Morgantown. Thank you, John. Hurricanes over the Bears down there. Butch Davis and the Miami Hurricanes have the majority of their remaining games inside the Orange Bowl as they look to get onto a roll here towards the end of the season. Once again, Johnston finds David Saunders, who makes his fifth catch of the afternoon. That one goes for eight yards, and now West Virginia really starting to work on the left side cornerback, Mike Sandy. Well, they're working on the corners, both sides. I think that the... Those things are not plays that kill you, but very wisely, West Virginia is moving down the football that way. I think the corners of uh, Rutgers are doing a good job just holding it to a minimum, and now they've got to get more pressure on the quarterback Rutgers has in order to stop those kind of things from happening. Keaton now breaks out of the backfield. And on the ground, can Troy Barber. No gain on the play, making the initial hit there, Rudy Smith along with Rashawn Giddings. Uh, Tony, I've got a preliminary report here from up here in the press box on J.T. Thomas. The x-rays show really nothing serious. They are just going to make a double check again, and I guess this is the third round, and going back to the x-rays, but I think it's good news. He certainly is hurting. He certainly doesn't feel good, but nothing serious is what we all prayed for and what we wanted to have happen. And, Let's play football. That's great news. West Virginia's uh, leading tackler, J.T. Thomas, in case you're joining us late, was injured in the second quarter when he took a helmet-to-helmet uh, -helmet shot with Ezra Johnson of Rutgers and was on the field for several moments before uh, he was finally helped off the field. Timeout has been taken by Chad Johnston, West Virginia, looking at second down and nine. The Mountaineers on top 31 to 12 over Rutgers. March. The seventh play of this West Virginia drive is coming up. The Mountaineers began this drive on their own 16-yard line. The line of scrimmage right now, the 37, as the Mountaineers face second down and nine. This is what I meant by establishing. Out to Lovett Purnell, and Purnell 
rolls out of bounds. Not before he picks up a West Virginia first down. Ten yards on the pickup for Lovett Purnell. That is his second catch of the afternoon for 59 yards. He caught West Virginia's first touchdown pass in the opening quarter. So you go all the way back to Carol Willis. Here's a nice catch. That's the second pass. The second pass he's caught. I'd be the first one for a touchdown. This one for a first down. Very, very productive tight end in every area. Great pass protector, great blocker, wonderful receiver. Make sure that Jack Tree catches the ball. On first down, this is true freshman Curtis Keaton looking to turn it up to you. He's got very good speed. A sub, believe this, sub 4 3, 40 yard dash. He was clocked in high school at 4 2 8. He's averaging six yards a carry, and he picks up six yards there. Right now, let's take a look at our out of town scores brought to you by John Hancock, official worldwide sponsor of the 1996 Olympic Games. Syracuse and Tech, that's the big showdown in the Big East this afternoon. Arkansas with a three point lead. Florida Gators on their way. As we saw there, Tennessee now blanking Southern Miss. Navy and Notre Dame fighting it out. This goes all the way back to Willis not going for the first down on second down, got bounced out of the third, which causes this long 10 play drive by West Virginia. And a great throw by Chad Johnson. Into the end zone, touchdown to David Saunders. Beautifully thrown pass from Chad Johnston to David Saunders into the corner of the end zone. It goes for 21 yards. Boy, when uh, when you're hot, you're hot. When you're not, you're not. They have not been. They sure are today. Just a tremendous catch and reception in the end zone. He knows he's thrown a strike. He knows it. <laughs> Those are great things to have happen if you're not for Brunches. Brian Bauman's extra points through the uprights as West Virginia expands its lead to 38 to 12 with eight minutes and 34 seconds to play here in the third quarter. We'll be back to Mountaineer Field where that anemic offense of West Virginia over the last two weeks has disappeared. Happy guy, David Saunders, who has just hauled in a 21-yard touchdown reception to give West Virginia a 38-12 lead over the Scarlet Knights. And it brought the sun right out. Everything is shining beautifully here in Morgantown, West Virginia. It's so easy when you're playing well. It's so tough for Rutgers. It's, uh, it's been a season that was full of dreams in August. And here they are, just not able to muster anything that uh, counts for Saturday afternoon in November. Terrell Willis with the kickoff return. Over the 25 as a penalty marker is thrown on the play. And on the stop for West Virginia, T.J. Walker, a backup running back for the Mountaineers. And a hold call will be tagged on to the return against Rutgers. You know, you, you just see so return. many ten. Holding. Return team. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. First down. By the time John Smith gets done, it almost <laughs> looks like they had to be holding. You know, he, he's so official about it, you know. You say, yeah, he's right. You don't want to even argue with him. Now what Rutgers has got to do is settle down and move the football down and move the chain and don't always try to get the big play because you've got a lot of talent and you can move the football if you just want to get at the end zone because you've got to get moving fast. It's 38 to 12. Here we are in the third quarter. Ray Lucas, 5 of 13 passing this afternoon and he will throw on first down. Fires, that's Reggie Funderburk and it's good for a Rutgers first down ahead to the 34-yard line. Right now, a score update to our Big East Studios with John Sanders. All right, Tony, thank you very much. And the Miami Hurricanes on the move, opening it up against Baylor. It's Danielle Ferguson who'll take the handoff. This is a terrific run. Watch the cutback move and then the speed. It's all over. And Tony, he has matched what Jimmy Gary is doing. That is his third touchdown of the game, 28-7. Let's go back to Morgantown. Thanks, John. And so maybe uh, Gary and Danielle Ferguson will be slugging it out for Big East Offensive Player of the Week honors. At least there are two solid candidates right now as Bruce Presley carries it ahead to the 41-yard line. You know, you're talking about 
Bernard Emerson coming in and making the hit again. We talked about him, him taking place of Russ, and he certainly made a hit on that football play. I thought it was going to go bigger. When you hit uh, Presley like that, you know you've made a hit. But they are moving the football. Let's go Rutgers. Second down and four. Lucas has time, fires for Bill Powell, and it's good for a Scarlet Knights first down to the 46-yard line. And once again, the strong side linebacker for West Virginia, Bernardo Amerson, was there to make the tackle. Now, this is the thing that uh, that Rutgers can do well. It's a thing that Guy can do well. Uh, Ray Lucas is an excellent football player on these things. Now, they're almost up to the 50-yard line. Don't get greedy. You've got plenty of time get this game, get Rutgers back in the football game. Ray Lucas trying to keep those hands warm as he gets ready to fire it once again on the run. Incomplete. Over there again looking for Bill Powell, who had just made the last reception. Powell is a freshman from Rockville, Maryland. Now 11 catches. He plays like a freshman. Season. He ran himself out of bounds to catch the ball. You stop five yards from the sideline and give the quarterback a target. Ran right out of bounds on the things. There he goes to the sideline. Mac, it sounds to me as though if well, you had him in your coaches meeting on Monday, you would be schooling him. <laughs> no, I just think those little mistakes are what what kill people, especially when you have to play freshman with all the injury situations that you have. I feel bad for the coaching staff and for other people on the football field, well, actually. Second down, Presley want to throw it again. He completed one in the first half. And he's going to run with it. Fixed out of bounds there by Bob Baum. Right at midfield, that'll be a four-yard pickup for Bruce Presley. If you weren't with us early on in the game, Presley wound up and he fired downfield to Chad Bosch, completed a 51-yard pass, and again, they had the same intention. No, they did. They were. This is a throwback thing, but Mike Logan, the great corner, stayed home. He doesn't have anybody throw, so wisely he pulls it down and runs it. But the man that made the big play on this wasn't fooled at all is Mike Logan on the backside of that play that you've got to give him credit for. So now Rutgers will be looking at third down and six. Third down has not been a good conversion down this afternoon. Rutgers is in confusion, and they are going to be forced to use up a timeout as the 25-second clock was winding down inside of Ted. We'll stop the clock with seven minutes and 13 seconds to play. I'm Tony Caridi, along with Dick McPherson. We're at Mountaineer Field in Morgantown, and you could bill this game as the Elimination Bowl. Rutgers comes in two and five on the season. West Virginia is three and five. So the Scarlet Knights have four games remaining. Mathematically, if they were to win their four games, they would have six on the year, and that would qualify them for a bowl bid, most likely the Liberty Bowl, which will go to the fourth place finisher in the Big East. On the other side for West Virginia, the Mountaineers with three games remaining. They have one left on the road. That will be at Miami in two weeks after an off week next Saturday, and then they'll close the season the day after Thanksgiving here against the Pitt Panthers. So that's why the Elimination Bowl came into it. If well, one of these teams can run the table. They could have six a winning season and a bowl. Tony, the, the elimination bowl is a very, very sad day for Rutgers. It goes without saying every Division I A team feels they want to have a winning season and go to a bowl. And the very sad time is when you're eliminated like Rutgers is being eliminated here today. It gives a boost to West Virginia and keeps them alive. Uh, they've got a long, hard road to go, though, but uh, you have to feel bad for the dreams of uh, all the hard work of the Rutgers football players put in, and it looks like it's to no avail. On third down and six, Funderburk is the motion man. And it's Funderburk with the reception. First down, Scarlet Knights as Funderburk is knocked down at the 27-yard line, a 22-yard pickup for Reggie Funderburk, the junior from Jersey City. I think that the All-American Beasley made the great tackle. We talked about it earlier in the day. Watch him balance up. Just make sure he makes the hit in the open field. Coming right in the picture right there. To does him excellent tackle. Good defense. Make him bleed for every yard they get to getting the ball of the end zone. Eat the clock up and go home with the victory. He's on the minds of West Virginia right now. On the toss play to Terrell Willis. He tries to turn it to the outside, and Jamie Sweeney is there to knock him out of bounds. No gain on the play for Terrell Willis. He has uh, pretty much been held in check this afternoon now, Mac. 28 yards on 10 carries. He comes into this afternoon's game averaging five yards per carry. Well, 
excellent defense. They pitched the ball to him the outside. But the uh, Rutgers, Bruce uh, Presley is running that play very well. Uh, I think we've got to make sure that Terrell turns the play up a little bit more. And because uh, all he's doing is just running to the sideline with it. And the speed is not getting him there. West Virginia defense is too fast. Mountaineers blitz. Pass complete to Stephen Harper. He scored one touchdown this afternoon. On his way to the end zone. Touchdown, Rutgers. Couldn't have been any closer. The ball popped out with a great hit just as he crosses the goal line. Uh, just a wonderful play. It's one of those... Uh, Wonderful quick screens that's allowed in college ball. It's not allowed in pros. Great blocking downfield by the uh, the offensive line. Pick everybody off. Steve Harper jets it into the end zone. That's Steve's second touchdown of the day pass-wise. Take a look at it. As Mac mentioned, a pick over the middle. Offensive linemen love this play. They're downfield blocking. Now watch this hit right here on the goal line. That's pretty close. Aaron Beasley. Aaron Beasley again with the big hit. The extra point attempt is good for the Scarlet Knights. Another look there at Stephen Harper, who scores his second touchdown. As he goes in towards the end zone, Beasley really lays it onto him. The ball pops loose, but the official right there to say that the ball had broken the plane of the goal line. I, I, didn't, I know what the official called. What did you call, Tony? <laughs> I thought that was pretty close. Did you notice, did we see Joe Kukowski come in and kick that ball? Yes, goal? we did. Yes, I think uh, we said we weren't going to see much more of uh, Nick Mike by today. I think he's out of there. And Joe, uh, the kickoff man, came in and put it through the upright. Joe Kukowski kicked that last extra point in for the Scarlet Knights after Mick Meyer had missed a field goal and two extra point attempts. That makes the score 38 now to 19 with six minutes and 29 seconds to play. There's a good look at Stephen Harper, who just ran that one in from 28 yards away. And as we had mentioned earlier on, he had caught a touchdown pass in each of the last three games, and now he has scored four touchdowns, five touchdowns in the last three weeks for Rutgers. That was a wonderful offensive drive by by Rutgers. Now they've got to come back again. I just think that, uh, you know, it's, what Steve has got to do is hang on to that football just a little bit more so he doesn't give the official a chance to call it anything but a touchdown. Great hit by Aaron Beasley, though. What a good football player. Joe Kukowski will put it on the tee. 38 to 19, 6.29 to go. Plenty of time. 19-point game. 6.29 remains in this third quarter. Always like to see what happens on this series here. Can West Virginia answer touchdown with a touchdown or a field goal? Or will this do enough for the Rutgers defense to shut them right down and get the ball back to their offense? Rashawn Vanterpool and Mike Logan, the deep men back for West Virginia. And this is going to be a pooch kick. And it is buffed. And the Mountaineers able to get back on top of it at the 28-yard line. Let's get a score update right now. Here's John Sanders. Hi, Tony. Thank you very much. We go to West Lafayette. Wisconsin had taken the lead, but back comes Purdue. Diving in is Edwin Watson, turning the corner and just getting to the pylon. They added a two-point conversion lead, 28-21. It's a little dirty, but let's, there's no mud in Morgantown, guys. Let's go back to you. No mud at all. We had a few snow flurries a little, earlier on. A little bit of luck you here, right? Just the one man signal for a fair catch. Somebody else coming in with a collision is still able to recover it. And when you're hot, you're hot. Uh, this is West Virginia's day. Todd Dye was able to get out of that loose football. This is Curtis Keaton with a penalty marker down. And Keaton knocked out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Gain of one, but a penalty marker thrown in the backfield of West Virginia. And recovered the fumble. Motion penalty against West Virginia. That's the second time this afternoon that the Mountaineers will take a five-yard penalty for illegal motion. It's always interesting to me as a coach to watch these young speed backs. As soon as they come into the league, they're so used to high school just running around the corner and nobody else being able to catch them. Now you see this youngster from West Virginia come in and illegal motion amazed. Office. The five yards is assessed at the previous spot, first and 15. See when John Smith talks, I shut right up. I listen. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think the thing that you've uh, you've got to be 
so conscious of is Curtis Keaton's so used to just running away from people. That goes to show you the great athletes that are on the Rutgers defense. First and 15. Johnston going to fire it deep for Lovett Purnell. He scored one this afternoon, and he's going to score two. Lovett Purnell will go all the way. 76 yards for the touchdown, and Johnston fires his third touchdown strike of the afternoon. He got hit just as he threw the ball, but he peeked up and signaled touchdown from a pro laying on his back. That what happened action here. With good protection. Again, we talked about earlier about the safeties playing the run, not, not staying back. Levant right there to take the play. And uh, you got to admire the guy, just how he blocks and sets himself up. Just a tremendous threat all the time, and uh, I'm happy for Levant and Purnell that he's having a good day offense. Bad snap, great hands on the part of the holder, Brian West, as Brian Bauman knocks the extra point through to build that West Virginia lead to 45 to 19. Now watch the hit here. Watch him on the ground. Now watch him roll over. Watch the signal he gives. He's the official. Watch him give the signal back. Touchdown. <laughs> You've got it. That's what's great about playing this wonderful game of football. There's so many things that go on where everybody can have so much fun. It's a team sport all the way. But they certainly answered a touchdown with a touchdown, 45 to 19. Everybody's saying, where were they? Syracuse, where were they last week? Right here at home. Tough We're time. long on the reception for Love and Purnell. It goes 76 yards. Now three catches, 135 yards for Purnell. The first touchdown pass he caught this afternoon on the Mountaineers' opening possession went for 49 yards, and West Virginia really has not looked back since. Brad Hackett kicks it away, and this one will be taken by Terrell Willis from the 10. To the outside, and he is rudely met there at the 30-yard line. But again, he's got the ball to the 30-yard line. You have to be impressed with Terrell Willis and what he does with the football and the kickoff. He's uh, very, very exciting. Great speed, great power. Uh, all he has to do is transfer that to his running game with a little bit more power and not skate to the outside. You know, he's already good, but he could be a lot better. And it's an exciting guy to watch. Willis will go out of the game now for the Scarlet Knights. Bruce Presley will come in. They're going to come right back and keep answering these things. We're going to have an offensive showdown here today, I believe. Once again, Lucas finds Reggie Funderburk on the outcut. Mike Logan there on the coverage for West Virginia. Back. Take a look at that last scoring drive. Just one play as Purnell goes from 76 yards. Defensively, Mac, as you take a look at that outcut, as a coach, as a coordinator, defensive coordinator, you're just willing to give that up until you reach a certain point. Well, when it's 45 to 19, especially, don't uh, let them have the big one. Uh, you know, I asked before, could uh, they answer the play? They certainly did. With 19 seconds, they answered a touchdown. You can't get any faster than that. Bill Powell. Once again, connects on the reception with Ray Lucas. Charles Emanuel on the coverage, and the Scarlet Knights, no huddle. No huddle offense, two-minute offense. They have to not be in down so many points. Wise call by Rutgers. Inside handoff, this is Bruce Presley. And he's knocked down at the 49-yard line. You have to be impressed with the tackling of West Virginia. They're just doing a great job and all the tackling they're doing. I, I just uh, can't emphasize enough that, uh, you know, Jamie Sweeney played well last week, coming right back with another great performance. Lucas lets that one get away, intended it for Bill Powell as it sails over his head. Last inning. Graver's club suffered what he called his worst loss ever at Rutgers the last time 
These two teams played here back in West Virginia's undefeated season in 1993. The final score was 58 to 22. The Mountaineers right now on top 45 to 19. Looking at third down and seven. Looking for Battaglia and misfires. And it's been that kind of an afternoon yep. to look up into the heavens for Ray Lucas. You know, third down, and the guy has the ball right in his hands. And what you have to say with Pernell playing on one side, Battaglia playing on the other, who's the All-American tight end today? You have to give it to Pernell's side because Battaglia has got to make these catches. He has to make them. They're right there. Yep, no question. It was there. And it is a rarity to see Battaglia drop a pass, but uh, he has been held in check. One reception, two yards for Battaglia. The Mountaineers will let this punt take a bounce, and it'll blow it down at the 15-yard line. So West Virginia will take over with just over five minutes to play in the third quarter, leading at 45 to 19. Two touchdown passes from Chad Johnston here in the third quarter, connected with David Saunders and with his tight end, Lovett Purnell. West Virginia will have next Saturday off, and then the following week, they'll head down to the Orange Bowl to take on the Miami Hurricanes. On the ground, this is the freshman, Curtis Keith. And he's going to head to the 19-yard line. Big pop there down there between Curtin, Curtis Keaton, I should say, and Cameron Chadwick. Ola, Ola Cameron Chadwick, let him know the game isn't over yet. No, you could hear the hit. There had to be some sound somewhere around there because I could hear the pop all the way up here. You have to admire that. Again, you know, with the score, I just have to emphasize to people it's so difficult to keep yourself up and play hard with, with the game going the way it is. But uh, Rutgers is not that kind of bunch of young men. They want to play. Toss play to Keaton as he tries the left side. And a good job by Rutgers to string the play out. Mike Sandy, the cornerback there, to run him out of bounds. No gain. And that'll make it third down and six. I think that uh, when you have a play like that, you try to get to the outside. Keaton runs out there, but he's got to make a decision sometimes to turn it up inside. But he had no place to go. Just excellent defense by Rutgers on that play. Chad's having a good uh, good day on third down also. They've done a tremendous job with the play action series they've had on this. The I formation, you'll probably see the play action again. There it is. He's been thrown to the sidelines on third down. Now the pressure is on. He's in a heap of trouble, and they have got him. Think of you Rusty look. Swartz. It's very obvious that it looks like Chad made a mistake. What's happening here is that the uh, wide receiver ran inside instead of the outcut that you just talked about, Tony. See, he's got nobody to throw to, and so he has to just take whatever he can get. Now they're punting out of their own end zone. Third sack of the afternoon for Rutgers, and John Powers, as he did in the first half, will kick it out from the Mountaineer end zone. And it's not a pretty kick. Funderburg lets it take a hop, and Rutgers will begin this possession inside West Virginia territory. Not extremely pretty, but it does go for 40 yards. It's, it's enough to get you worried that uh, you're not getting your punting game solved for another week. Those things are very scary if it's a close football game. You must get more field position out of it than that. Can't expect those lucky bounces every Saturday. It's got to come out of the foot of the punter. Excellent field position for Rutgers. From just inside midfield. Ray Lewis, Ray Lucas, I should say, will take it from a conventional snap. He had been coming out of the shotgun on the last possession. He'll hand the ball off to Terrell Willis, looking for running room. And he's ahead to the 45-yard line. Pickup of five on the play for Terrell Willis, who 10 times in his career at Rutgers has gone over 100 yards. Excellent back. Tremendous athletic skills. Timed up this uh, counter tray, as they call it nowadays, football play, and uh, hit it real well. 
blocked real well by the Rutgers offensive lineman also. Jonathan Gibbs has come in as a receiver for the Scarlet Knights. Lines up in a slot position. Battaglia is the motion man. As the punch. Just didn't have time to get it off. Lucas on the run. Down for the Scarlet Knights. Down to the 29. 16 yards on the carry for Ray Lucas, who ran in for a touchdown in the opening half. I think that's one of his strengths to be able to break the, out of the pocket and get down, make the first downs because Battaglia was wide open on the play, but he just couldn't get the ball to him. It was a nice bunch pattern, delay across underneath. They just haven't yet been able to get the coordination on it. And you got to give credit to West Virginia defense for that also. This is Willis with the hole, and he's taken down by the free safety, Van Washington. Pick up of five yards on the play. Time for another score update. Let's head to our Big East studios. Here's John. And Tony, Arkansas has never defeated Mississippi State, but they may this afternoon. Diving in is Madre Hill from the one. They say he broke the plane, gets the touchdown, completes the drive. It's 24-14. Let's go back to Morgantown. Thanks, John. It is second down and four from the West Virginia 23-yard line. <laughs> Motion up front, Henry Slay, the West Virginia nose tackle, leaped up. I thought that uh, Lucas, in the last two snaps, Mac, had gone with a very loud, heavy count. Offsides, defense. And then it's uh, uh, off. I think he's changed the count. That's pretty much, the, the, he's always doing the same thing with the most, but I, he's varied the count to try to offset the, the great rush of the West Virginia lineman. I think that's what's happened on the thing. They expected it, though. That's probably what you're seeing, right, Tone? Five yards any way you can get it. We'll bring the ball inside the 20 down to the 18-yard line. And moves the chains. First down. It's always nice to see those chains move because uh, you're controlling your own destiny when that chain moves. Now you've got four downs to decide what you're going to do. 19-yard line, 18. On the ground, Willis is wrapped and dropped by cornerback Mike Logan. He's having a good afternoon out there for the Mountaineers. Well, I think you have to be impressed with the tackling. As, I, I, as I've said before, I believe the strength of the West Virginia team is that defense, and they've been playing real solid, but it's been hidden by uh, the lack of scoring and, and some special team mistakes. They've hung in there, and I think it's going to bode them well as they make the stretch run, which uh, West Virginia is so famous for. Applies the pressure. Lucas is going to keep once again, and he'll be knocked out at the 15. Gain on the play of three yards. Second time on this possession that Lucas has kept the ball. As Jamie Sweeney was there for the Mountaineers. Stops the clock with one minute and 38 seconds to play in the third quarter. West Virginia on top of Rutgers 45-19. I don't know if that was a design run or not. It certainly didn't look like it, but Tara Willis made a, a nice block on the thing, which made me think that it might be uh, a run. Third down and six. Lucas again off the roll. Incomplete to Stephen Harper. It'll be fourth down and six. Flat out drop on that time well, by Harper. He said he was worried about the sideline that he ran out before. That's what happened to Steve on the thing. Uh, again, I think it was good timing on the football play, but he just didn't look the thing in. He was trying to turn it upfield. They're going to go for it on fourth down, I'm sure, with the score the way it is. Big play. Wouldn't be surprised to see another sprint on the football play because that's been very good for them. Down by 26. Doug Graber has nothing to lose at this point. Going for it on fourth down and six. Lucas has time, floats it in, complete for Battaglia. He overthrew a wide open Marco Battaglia, and the Mountaineers will take it. I think the coverage made him uh, overthrow it because I think behind him you'll find that they're, they're trailing him pretty good. Watch uh, 81 come into the picture. See, see the, the trailing of him like this. 
by uh, Van Washington covering him deep and Bernard Anderson underneath makes him throw it over the top. And that's good defense. But he should have put that in there. Just let him leap for the ball at least. And let him fight for it in the end zone. Let athletes fight for it. So West Virginia will take it over. That's the second time this afternoon that the Scarlet Knights have come up short on a fourth down conversion attempt. Curtis Keaton finds a hole and takes it over the 21 yard line. Pickup of five yards on the play. Norris Crawford into the game for the Scarlet Knights. He's been injured of late. Makes the tackle that time for Rutgers. Chad Johnston came into the game this afternoon with six touchdown passes, nine interceptions. Very uncharacteristic after the season he had a year ago. This afternoon, Mac, he's been able to even things up. Now nine touchdowns and nine interceptions. Well, I think that uh, you know, you can't play much better than he did today, and I think it's been a good offensive game plan and wonderfully executed. To our Big East Studios now with another score update. Here's John Sanders. Tony, keeping everybody posted on the other half of our regional coverage of Big East football this afternoon. It's in the fourth quarter. Watch the blocking in front of Daryl McMillan. He's untouched as he cuts it back, moves it into the end zone. A 16-yard touchdown run. All Miami 35-7. to Back to Morgantown. And Tony and Dick. Gentlemen. Hey, we talk about Miami from the penthouse top five of the country down to the outhouse and the climbing that way back up we everybody the Big East better watch out for the Hurricanes they don't give up easy with that tre tremendous tradition they have down there back it looks as though uh, Butch Davis is a uh, running game that he wants to use down there is starting to pay off 30 the Big points. East is uh, taking it to the Southwest Conference today that that helps a little bit wherever final you go. seconds tick off the clock we've played three here in Morgantown we'll be back for the start of our fourth quarter in just a moment it started out as a home. Oh. And we're back at Mountaineer Field in Morgantown with West Virginia in comfortable control, 45 to 19, as we get ready to begin our fourth quarter of play. I'm Tony Caridi along with Dick McPherson. Start of the fourth quarter, 45 to 19. The ball is on the 20 yard line, 80 yards to go. They're really playing well. West Virginia is probably the best they've looked all year, Tony. No question about it. Offensively, the uh, points obviously have been very difficult to, to come by in the most uh, recent couple of games for West Virginia. Blanked at Syracuse and against Virginia Tech. They had 31 against Boston College as David Saunders hauls in one over the middle, and he is close to midfield. What an afternoon this young guy is having. David Saunders picks up 29 yards on that reception. You know, he's getting a backside pressure here. He's awful lucky to be able to get away from uh, Brett Avery to, with a great pass rush on and get the ball up over the top. Now watch Charles Wiley come in with a great hit and uh, knock David down. Career afternoon for David Saunders in his first ever college game, the season opener for the Mountaineers against Purdue. He caught uh, passes for 100 and 30 yards here today he now has 116 reception yards this is Curtis Keaton gets a block from his fullback and Troy Barber inside Rutgers territory down to the 43 yard line again that time uh, eight yards for the true freshman from Columbus Ohio Curtis Keaton you can see the quickness and the greatness of Curtis Keaton you're going to hear a lot of them in, in the future time here at West Virginia but He's a wonderful little athlete that can move the football downfield, and he's learning each time he carries the ball. You can see him getting better. Now, we don't know if uh, Robert Walker is injured, but uh, we saw him early in the first half, and he has not been seen since. Jimmy Gary did a good job. Yeah, that's Jimmy and Gary. And why use him? Because I'm sure that his, his ankle is bothered. You know? He's in practice. Matt McCulty hauls in the reception. It's going to be a day they need Robert. It's uh, wise not to, uh, you know, not to use him in a game like this with the score 45 to 19. And we do receive a note from uh, down on the field. Once again, that ankle is bothering Robert Walker for West Virginia. And we also received word that Jimmy Gary, who had the three touchdowns in the second quarter, has injured his wrist. And that is why we're seeing so much of freshman Curtis Keaton. 
Well, I think this is the time to see a lot of them when it's 40. That's when to play freshmen. If they can learn and not cause a team to go downhill as they, as they do it. On the delay handoff, this is Curtis Keith. Down to the 35-yard line, a gain of three on the play. Here are the numbers after three quarters. Now West Virginia with 413 yards of total offense. A complete turnaround from last Saturday, Mac, when they struggled so against Virginia Tech. Well, you mentioned earlier that David Saunders was having kind of a record day. He's only a freshman. What kind of a day is Chad Johnson having record-wise? It seems to me that he's doing fantastically. The way he's playing, and everything, everything's coming up roses for him today. How about 303 yards? for Chad Johnston. You can't have too many days better than that, I don't think. He had 390 against Purdue, which was the uh, best all-time mark at Mountaineer Field. And already over the 300 mark here this afternoon, pickup of two on that play. Another score update right now. Here's John. You talked about Chad Johnston against Purdue. This is Mike Samuel of the Badgers of Wisconsin faking the reverse, and he'll find Donald Hayes. Watch this little cutback move that he makes at the 20. Takes him into the end zone. That got him to within four, but Purdue has scored again, and they lead it 38-27. Back to Tony and Vic. Boy, that's a big, big game, and, you know, Wisconsin's dreaming of a bowl game, and they've had some ups and downs. Tremendous job that he's done up there at Wisconsin, but glad for Purdue. They, they needed a big game like that. On third down and five, the play action. Johnston steps up wide open. Saunders touchdown. That's again a freshman mistake. The safety is supposed to sit there on the hash mark and ran inside with the post cut. Left the corner wide. The corner leveled off of the thing. Take a look at the defensive backfield. That's been the uh, area that's been hit hardest by injury. Yes. Just have missed assignments. See, you saw the safety running in with the underneath safety. And, you know, what's happening here on the thing? Garrick Ward's looking, where's my deep help? And there wasn't any touchdown, West Virginia. Brian Bauman tags on the extra point, and West Virginia cracks the 50 mark. The Mountaineers leading it 52 to 19 with plenty of football still to play in this final quarter. It was about 37 degrees, and yeah, blankets, scarves, hats, you name it, put it on. They're still staying around, though. The hearts are warmed up with that 52-19 score here at Mountaineer Field. I want to say one thing. We started with uh, both teams, one foot in the grave, one foot in banana peel, but I think uh, West Virginia is coming out of it. Bosch. He's making a banana that, uh, peel, slips down at the 35, yep. brought down there by Jamie Brown. Mac, the West Virginia offense uh, obviously has been effective here this afternoon, but they have scored touchdowns now on five of their last six possessions. The most recent, David Saunders catching his second touchdown of the afternoon, a 32-yard strike from Chad Johnston. I think it all goes back to that Purdue game. They kicked that field goal. They would have won that game. They'd have played, they've been playing up tight ever since then. It's that sad first half of the kids Purdue. Uh, now we got to get the same thing for a Rutgers team because they certainly have great determination effort. You can't fault the effort. It's just that they've had dastardly luck in terms of the injuries and safety and uh, just heard the turnover problems. But uh, you've got to like the way they hang in there and keep playing. I think that's a credit to Doug Graber and his staff for keeping everybody together. Because I know how disappointed everybody is. They had big dreams and big aspirations, especially offensively down there. It's going to be tough on them. Chad Bosch on that last carry for the Scarlet Knights up to 49-yard line for a first down. Once again, Bosch gets the call, and he will be stopped. Lose a yard on the play. Kevin Landolt, uh, number 98 for West Virginia, defensive tackle from Delran, New Jersey, out of Holy Cross High School, makes the stop for West Virginia. The Mountaineers have had a lot of success uh, going into Holy Cross High School. Landolt's teammate, Brian Pucanus, also a redshirt freshman on this Mountaineer team, is now an offensive lineman for West Virginia, and also last season's, uh, one of the top defensive players on last season's team out of Holy Cross High School, and that's Matt Tafoni. Lucas now in a bit of trouble. Breaks away from Bernardo Anderson. It's going to let it fly, 
and it is broken up nicely with a penalty marker being thrown. Jason Williams batted the ball away, but apparently there's going to be an interference call coming up. Boy, uh, Ray is a senior. He's got to stop throwing that ball back in the middle when he's running off to his right like that because I think that... Uh, How about that one? Offensive oh, pass man. interference is going to be the call. Battaglia is the intended receiver. I think that's one of the calls that you'd want to have back because, you know, I don't know what they're talking about there. I think that, uh, see what happens now. Now you watch the referee here. He'll he'll make a great call about something. See why John does a good job of this. Scarlet Knights start to step back. Pass interference, offense, the penalty is assessed at the previous spot, 15 yards, repeat the down. Yep. And uh, it's very obvious there wasn't a call on the play, and John Smith had to make believe he believed it himself as he made that call. But Graber sees his team pushed back to the 34-yard line. 10 minutes and 42 seconds remain here in the fourth quarter of action. If you're just joining us, West Virginia on top 52 to 19. Just good football sense will tell you that when the ball is thrown back in the middle from the right side, there's going to be a lot of bumping going on. Quarterback draw. Here comes Lucas, and he's got field ahead. First down for the Scarlet Knights up the sideline. Mike Logan finally takes him out of bounds. Nice play call there for Rutgers as Ray Lucas runs for 41 yards. You can see now what Steve Dunlap was talking about with us yesterday, but how concerned he is about Ray Lucas. What an athlete, and he's an offense within himself. Uh, so dangerous uh, how he can move the football down the field. The consistency of the uh, Rutgers offense is a thing that just kind of frustrates you. They're moving it, not giving up, down to the 25-yard line, trying to get the ball in the end zone once more. Inside handoff, this is Chad Bosch with the hole. He is stuck by free safety Van Washington. Pickup of about eight yards on the play. I like that when he was stuck. <laughs> I think that uh, Van Washington felt that stuck himself. That was a nice hit. The tackling of West Virginia, I don't believe it's been any better. It's impressive all the time. Let's see if you would call this a stick. They're <laughs> stuck. He kind of got stuck. He was I guess, rolling along and got stuck. I guess I'd call it a stick. Right. <laughs> Once again, Boss will get the carry, and he'll take a plunge for a first down as he was hit there initially by 44. Jason Williams, who was on in place of the injured JT Thomas, and again, the Early prognosis on linebacker J.T. Thomas is good. He has uh, gone through x-rays, and uh, there is no sign of any serious damage. They're calling it a deep shoulder bruise. Back in the first half, Thomas collided head-to-head -head with Ezra Johnson of Rutgers and uh, laid, motion laid motionless on the field for about to 12 to 15. And Bosch gets the carry, and the Mountaineers waiting on him is Beasley and Sweeney. Combined, no gain on that play. I wonder where, where Willis and uh, Presley is. The, the Bosch has had a lot of carries carrying this ball down. They're getting close to the goal line. I suppose anything's wrong with them? We'll take a peek over on that other sideline and uh, see if we can pick them up. They're both standing there, Mac, and they're healthy. I get you. He probably wants to give Chad some work. Now. And the shotgun. Just going to step up and he tosses it to Battaglia and he'll be stopped just shy of the goal line down to the one yard line on the shovel. A 12 yard pickup for Battaglia. Just his second catch of the afternoon. Just a tremendous play by an athletic play. He and Battaglia playing the pitch downfield forward pass. Battaglia almost gets in the end zone. Should be a first down right in there. Again, Canute Curtis is the one that puts the pressure on that causes the pitch to the, to the end zone. Bruce Presley has come on. He's in the tailback spot for the Scarlet Knights. And Presley with the carry, the leap, and the touchdown for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. 
Now the ball pops right loose, up. but the official had already signaled yep. the touchdown had been scored. I think he was a legitimate score. Watch it. Watch the great power and lead that Billy of Bruce Presley put the ball up over the end zone, and now it's coming out late. Yep. So that stops the clock with eight minutes and 33 seconds remaining. 52 to 25 is the score. And Joe Kukowski will try the extra point for Rutgers. Looks like Joe found himself another Joe duty besides kickoff. Robert Higgins out of the hold of Robert Higgins. The extra point is good by Kukowski. 52 to 26. A 26 point lead for the Mountaineers. We'll be back. Eight minutes and 33 seconds remain. Burger King presents the first ever college football top 10 fans ball, where you, the fan, vote for who's number one. An undefeated ACC powerhouse. The number one team is Florida State. Go to Burger King and find out how you can make your team number one. Here we go, Whopper Junior Value Meal. Thank Whopper you. for me and a double Whopper. Thanks, man. Double Whopper. I'm scared of you. It's good. It's as big as the American way. Big cars, big houses, big food. At Burger King, get the flame broil taste of a Whopper value meal for just your size appetite at just your size price, starting at $1.99. And get your burger's worth. And what about moderation? Moderation's cool, if there's a whole lot of it. <laughs> Burger King, get your burger's worth. <laughs> Muhammad Ali is my brother. When we was kids, he used to get me to throw rocks at him so he could practice ducking and weaving. He had natural ability, but he was short on muscles, so he trained hard and got real strong. So strong that he went on to be the greatest heavyweight of all time. Number 44, Bruce Presley has just scored his third touchdown of the season. Take a look from the end zone view. A touchdown plunge in the truest sense as he breaks the plane of the goal line. The ball did pop loose there, but the touchdown had already been singled, signaled. And so the senior from Highland Park, New Jersey, who is second all time in all purpose yards, scores the touchdown. However, the Scarlet Knights find themselves down by 26 points. West Virginia looking for an onside kick has put its hands team onto the field. Kukowski with the onside kick. He's going to pooch it up high into the air. It's going to be a fair catch called for and taken by West Virginia's Sean Foreman. So the Mountaineers will start it from just over the 30 yard line. Still to come on the schedule for the Scarlet Knights. A trip down to meet up with the green wave of Tulane. They'll also play Temple at Veterans Stadium, and they will close the season off against Boston College. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice schedule, but the dreams are finished here this afternoon for them. I feel bad. Nice thing that uh, Coach Neal and the staff is doing. Eric Boykin's going to get some work here now at quarterback, and I think uh, it's going to be a lot easier for him to function with the score the way it is when he came in last week with Virginia Tech all over him every time he stood up. I'm anxious to see what Eric can do here. Maybe it's not a good thing for Rutgers that Boykin has come in because a year ago he started against the Scarlet Knights and did quite well. He threw for 233 yards against Rutgers last year. One touchdown pass, no interceptions in a game that was won by the Scarlet Knights 17 to 12 in New Jersey. I don't think he'll do that today. I think Coach Dino will just kind of keep the ball down a little bit. This is Kari Mott, fourth string tailback for the Mountaineers on the carry. You've seen Coach Dean a lot longer and a lot more than I have. Uh, that's probably what he's going to do oh, here. There's no Tony. question. Absolutely. Yeah. I think he wants to get uh, get home and uh, get warm and maybe take a peek at that Virginia Tech Syracuse game. Well, he certainly doesn't want to have Doug Gray with him to fight with him after the ball game is over. So <laughs> he's already seen that on TV. He doesn't need to see any more of that. I'm sure Donnie's going to run the clock out. Now, Eric 
It's tough on Eric because he can't display his wares or practice them, but it's only the right thing to do. Boykin finds Sean Foreman, who is playing in a receiver for the very first time at the college level. Foreman is a uh, backup cornerback for the Mountaineers who has moved to receiver this week. And Mack, he uh, had a big play last week against Virginia Tech, one of the few bright spots. Uh, he blocked a punt and recovered the punt block against the Hokies. That was the key series for West Virginia because it had tremendous field position and uh, went three and out on the thing, which, again, you have to give credit to that Virginia Tech defense, which is probably one of the best in the country. And, all of us are anxious to see just exactly how Syracuse is going to do against that defense this afternoon. Once again, Kari Mock gets the call. And he crosses over the 45-yard line Jeez. down to the 46 and a half. As West Virginia will be content with just making that clock continue to wind down. Frustrating afternoon for the Scarlet Knights. You get a look there at Derek Ward, the cornerback. This is by no way, shape, or form the uh, defensive unit that uh, Rutgers had thought they would have out on the field as far as the defensive backfield goes. Uh, they lost Paul Rivers, who's out of the game today. Mark Washington, the best among the defensive backs uh, with injuries. And it just uh, is difficult when you've got to try to play with the true freshman and redshirt freshman back there. Well, there's 21 points that you can attribute to the freshman not being there. There's nobody around three times, two by the tight end, Purnell, and one by the wide receiver, uh, David Saunders. So that's freshman mistakes. Everybody is scared to death of playing freshman for that reason. Bunch of happy Mountaineers down there. Do you notice they're a lot warmer than the oh, Rutgers yeah. guys? <laughs> they have a lot more fun. Every Rutgers guy is sitting over there all bundled up. Julian Butler has come on for West Virginia as a receiver. So a lot of redshirt freshmen out there. And a, that's the kind of afternoon it's been. You're laying down <laughs> on your butt and you make a catch. The that's only problem is if he'd have been laying down one yard further, they had a first, he laid down a little too soon. That is a, you talk about hitting your target. You hit your target right there. He does have great, great hands. Matt McCulty is a native of West Virginia from Spencer, West Virginia. Walk on to the Mountaineer program, and uh, he's had himself a good afternoon. Three catches now for 21 yards. Well, he always does the right thing. He's a coach's dream. He'll get the first down, all the big plays he'll get. Mountaineers now, because uh, McCulty was sitting on the job, are a few inches short, and so it's fourth down and in inches as the snow flurries once again begin to uh, flicker around Mountaineer Field, and Don Nealon's not going to go for it on fourth down. Hey, He's no, going to send listen, out his I think that the West Virginia fans are ahead 52 to 26. You don't boo your head coach when he's trying to show everybody there's good sportsmanship out there. I think that sometimes uh, people have to be reminded of things like that. Everybody's so critical of uh, college coaches running up the score. One coach at West Virginia, their state, is trying to do the right thing, and people in the stands boo. I'm not sure we're on the right level here of what's happening in college sports today, but I'm, I'm proud of what's happening. When you, you've got a team beat, you don't kick them with a down. And that's what conference membership is all about. And to show true sportsmanship, I think, is a good example of it. I think, Mac, they probably boo not so much. Uh, fans are just want to see the ball. They want to see their team with the ball. Defense is no fun from a fan standpoint, but uh, your point is well taken. I think taken. as soon as somebody buys a ticket for 10 to $12 at fourth down, they have a right to boo every time you don't go for it on fourth down. I think that's part of the <laughs> price of admission. It says it right I think on we the ought back to take a dollar off so they, don't, <laughs> so they don't boo coaches. I think that's part of it. One dollar is charged. You can boo if they don't go for it on fourth down, I guess, is what it is. Mountaineers uh, burn out the clock there as they uh, step back five yards on the delay of game. And they're going to do the same here. Use a little bit more of that clock up as it winds towards the four-minute mark. John Powers to the 15 yard with uh, Reggie Funderburk on the return and he'll be stopped short of the 30. Timeout on the field here at Mountaineer Field in Morgantown. Four minutes and 12 seconds to play. West Virginia on its way to a victory.
1995 NASCAR Winston Cup season is one of the most competitive in history. Now you can look back as racing's biggest stars provide high-powered action by ordering the 1995 NASCAR Year in Review home video. Because 1999, you can relive Marlins Daytona dominance, the emergence of the series. He's happy sitting there enjoying this game 52 to 26. You talk about those are the diehards. You hear the word diehard fans, the golden blue fans. They're there. As the snow begins to pick up a little bit, it really isn't that cold here today, to be honest with you. It isn't as bad as it looks. Yeah, that's true. Uh, because there really is no wind to talk about that at least we can feel uh, up here. As you can take a look at the streamers uh, down below on the field, there, there's a significant enough uh, amount of wind that could probably affect the flight of a deep pass. Yeah, if the, character, if the camera looks off of the distance, they see that beautiful white building with the sun shining all over it. It's a wonderful place to be, especially when you head 52 to 26. If you're down 26, you say to yourself, let's get out of here. Ray Lucas remains in at quarterback. Takes the pass and is taken down at the 33. Odell Tucker in on the tackle for West Virginia. Weak side linebacker out of McKinney, Virginia. When you uh, when you're Rutgers and you uh, meet the strong safety Mark Washington is one of the great plays you have. And you don't see him all year. Those are things that uh, kind of get to you it's this time of the year. Pittsburgh losing Billy West, Miami losing Casey Jones. Over the middle they find Dan Latour, the backup tight end. Good for a first down, a pickup of 23 yards as. The tour is shaken up on the play. Randy Fulmore, number nine, applied the hit there. Well, Randy really, really molded right into the play, but it's a great courage catch by Latour right there. He knows he's going to get a hit like that, but he hangs onto the football and takes it. Get the wind knocked out of him. It's almost uh, a tight end's legacy in, in, uh, in life. You're going to have a sore chest as all during the season. But he was able to hang on to it. We've got a timeout here as they attend to Dan Latour. Three minutes and 27 seconds on the clock. We'll be back to Mountaineer Field with West Virginia on top of Rutgers 52 to 26. This is $5,000 for the baby. I'm embarrassed to take this. And you could do something with it. Like what? Go on a cruise. If your mother and I want to do that, we'll do that. I can't pay this back. I'll pay it back by doing the same thing for your grandchild. Ford player of the game brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. It's West Virginia quarterback Chad Johnston. Four touchdown passes this afternoon. And this is the great throw and a wonderful catch on a broken pattern. And uh, Saunders is in there. And the play of the game's right there signaling it all the way. Congratulations, Chad Johnston. You've been much maligned. I'm awful glad you were able to come back and show them the true character of the West Virginia team and yourself. Chad Johnston, our Ford player of the game. First down, Chad Bosch takes the inside and fumbles the football away, and West Virginia has recovered. Mm. Boy, I'll tell you right now, that was just a great, great play by, uh, I guess, Steve Lippy was the one that uh, got the thing. Yep, Steve Lippy, backup linebacker for the Mountaineers, was able to fall on top of it as Bosch got turned around and lost control. I think you'll find that Bo Chatfield made the play that caused the fumble, though. That's that's the key of the whole thing. Kind of stripped it as he was uh, getting a hold of Bosch. Eric Boykin's still in the game. Places the play of the game. Watch out here. Here comes Leroy White. The fullback will go all the way. Mm, mm, mm. Leroy. Leroy does it strut in the end zone. A 60-yard touchdown run for Leroy White. Now again, 
it's again the uh, safety getting himself out of position in the middle, playing the strong side flow. Nothing left in the middle in the end zone. You can't feel any more sorry than I do as a person. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people at Rutgers do for the lack of experience and the tremendous injuries they've had the safety position to allow something like that to happen. It's a long struggle. First touchdown of the season for Leroy White. He is a sophomore from Washington, D.C. Brian Bauman's been kept busy with his extra points this afternoon. He tags on another in West Virginia. Has a 59 to 26 advantage. We'll be back to Mountaineer Field. Just over three minutes remain. Continues to celebrate his 60-yard touchdown run, giving West Virginia a 59 to 26 lead with three minutes and eight seconds remain. Brad Hackett with the pooch kick. Touched. It is loose. Mountaineers say they have it in yes, the deal. They, they had the ball kept blown right back in the receiver, didn't even know it was coming to him. Once the ball goes 10 yards on a kickoff, it's anybody's football. About everything that could conceivably go wrong for Rutgers is going wrong. Yes. Don Nealon tried to run out the clock by running his fullback up the middle. Yep. He goes for 60 yards. They try to pooch the kick into the air, and the ball bounces off the hand there, as you see of uh, Scarlet Well, Knights, you can see Joe, Joe Diggs, Diggs is yep. sitting there in the front line, ready to block for somebody, having no idea that the ball is coming right at him. It's just a tough, tough thing. Curtis Keaton fumbles the ball back in the Scarlet Knights recover. Thank you, Curtis. And Cameron Chadwick, the cornerback, was there to pounce on top of the loose ball. And Curtis Keaton gets a one-on-one -on -one meeting with his head coach right as he comes off the field. Yeah, I think that uh, he fumbles it right in front of him. That's a very naughty place to fumble the football. And the nice thing about these freshmen that are playing they can make mistakes when they really don't mean. Can you imagine a critical fumble like that when they were trying to march for a score? And uh, people cannot afford to get sloppy with the football. It will be a great lesson for them that will hold well in the future, I'm sure. Bosch up the middle with a hole as Randy Fulmore brings him down at the 48-yard line, 12 yards on the pickup for Bosch. Chad's biggest game so far this season came against Virginia Tech. He had 54 yards on nine carries. You no, know, I think one of the things we must mention, congratulations, Chad Johnson, player of the game. But there were two tremendous performances of David Saunders, who probably set a record for freshmen. And then, uh, you know, Jimmy Gary and what he did. I think uh, congratulations that they had player of the game type performances in my opinion. On first down again, Bosch. Finds running room and he'll pick up nine yards. Perry Sivaran in on that last tackle for the Mountaineers as you uh, get a look there at number 25, Chad Bosch. He is undersized. 5'9, 175 pounds. And compare those to Willis and Presley, who are both over 200 pounds. He's got that great element, though. He's got tremendous quickness and speed and competitiveness. That's what's wonderful about football. The speed is the most important thing and the desire to play the game. And he certainly has that. Picks up the first down on the carry. Bosch has uh, been the featured back for about uh, since early on in this fourth quarter. Terrell Willis and uh, Presley have been spectators. The clock is winding down. They're just running the football out, trying to get some practice in the running game. I kept the big pass play into the end zone. Lucas going for Stephen Harper, who's caught two touchdowns this afternoon, and he cannot come up with it. Right now, a score update back at our Big East studios. Here's John Sanders. Down at the Orange Bowl, they started at the same time we did in Morgantown, but they're finished. Here's the final touchdown running, Darrell McMillan. Untouched as he cuts it back 16 yards into the end zone, and there is the final score. Miami has won four in a row. 35-14 is the final. It was a big day for Ferguson. He scored three touchdowns, ran for 143 yards. Boston College still leading Temple 10-9, still 10-10 left in the fourth quarter. Let's go back to Tony and Dick in Morgantown. Gentlemen. 
about that one, Mac? 10-9, Boston College and Temple. Temple is uh, is starting to be heard from. And it's, they've, they've paid the price for it. Bosch on the handoff. Another first down for the Scarlet Knights as he crosses over the 20 and down to the 19-yard line. Owls looking for their second conference win earlier this season. They knocked off the Pitt Panthers. Listen, there's a hurricane coming out of the Hurricanes. Four in a row down there in Miami. And uh, West Virginia's got to face them if they want to get to a bowl. Syracuse has got to face them. And the road to wherever they want to go leads through Miami. Once again, it's Bosch. Breaks away from a would-be tackler and is head tackled down at the 15-yard line. No flag on the play as Bosch looks for a face mask penalty. That's Sean Foreman, real good player. Good return, man. I mean, I, I don't think those things should be called. He didn't, he didn't try to club the guy. He just brought his hand in there, and that's what ended up. Really a, just a good hit. More of a shoulder, actually, than the head area. As a, as well, you've got to remember, looked. he's 5'9". If he was 6'2", <laughs> it would be right in his chest. <laughs> Quick toss from Robert Higgins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys right there around the church with that quick pass in the sidelines. That's why West Virginia is good on defense with only 10 seconds to go. They want to keep them out of the end zone. Going to take a timeout with the 11 seconds to play. And the ball will be scrimmaged from the 12 yard line. West Virginia exploding here in the second half of play. Mountaineers led it 31 to 12 at the break and now are on top 59 to 26. Still to come on the schedule for the West Virginia football team. After an off week, they'll head down to the Orange Bowl to take on the red hot Miami Hurricanes. Now Miami has to play at Boston College next Saturday. And then West Virginia will close it here on a Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, against Johnny Majors and the Pitt Panthers for Rutgers. Two road games at Tulane, at Temple, which is a quasi-road game, not that far from the Rutgers campus. And then they'll take on Boston College on the same day as West Virginia plays Pitt, the 24th of November. Quasi-road game. Quasi, you know, Mac, it's, it's not that far from That's Rutgers That's that Syracuse education coming up. <laughs> I think one of the interesting things, West Virginia has a week off before they play Miami. Pass in the end zone is deflected and incomplete, and it will stop the clock with six seconds. And they'll give them one chance for another shot into the end zone to try to score. But I think everybody knows how well Don Nealon and the staff prepare a team if they get a week off. So I think that is going to be a big, big factor in, in terms of going down to Miami. Well rested, going down to the sun. A lot of Miami, a lot of Florida players on the team. It'll be an exciting time. This is the tonics that they needed when. Virginia Tech was 0-2. They needed the tonic of Miami. And now West Virginia is going to have that shot at it. Scarlet Knights are going to take another shot on fourth down. Just six seconds remaining. Higgins fires and complete. And West Virginia will take it over. One second to uh, tick off the clock. And that will do it. So a West Virginia football team that was unable to score a single point in eight quarters in games at Syracuse and then here last Saturday against Virginia Tech. He erupts for 59 points. So as Don Nealon's club will advance its record to four and five. The Scarlet Knights will fall to two and six. Has four wins, five losses. Uh, I think that uh, looks very good for him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we had number one sitting over there. Oh, Ray Lucas. <laughs> Ray Lucas. Right here. That'll do it. Final second is off the clock. West Virginia wins it in convincing fashion. A final score of 59 to 26. We'll be back to wrap it up from Mountaineer. The family of the future will have many hundreds of television.